Okay, I am calling the meeting to order and into open session. Uh, MBUSD, the Board of Education, is holding a regular virtual meeting tonight that all can participate in remotely. You can join via Zoom. Specific directions on how to participate in the meeting are located on the Board of Education webpage on the district's website, mbusd.org forward slash board. Uh, the open session part of this meeting agenda begins at 7 o'clock p.m. Public comments on closed session items. Before going into closed session, the board is available for public comment on closed session agenda items. Is there any public comment on closed session items? There are no comments at this time, President Martin. Uh, seeing that there are none, the Napa Valley Unified School District will now adjourn into closed session. Okay, use your calendar invites for closed. Hi. I will be, we are reconvening to open session. Uh, good evening, my name is Isela Martin. And this is the Napa Valley Unified School District Board of Education. The MVUSD Board of Education is holding a regular virtual board meeting tonight that all can participate in remotely. You can join via Zoom. Specific directions on how to participate in the meeting are located on the Board of Education webpage on the district's website, mvusd.org forward slash board. Can we please start with an attendance roll call from Vera Morales? Yes. Trustee Martin? Here. Trustee Gonzalez Mares? Here. Trustee Jankowitz? Here. Trustee Water? Trustee Water? Here. Trustee Hurtado? Present. Trustee Shunk? Present. Trustee Gracia? Present. Student Trustee Madrigal? Present. Quorum present. Thank you, Vera. Thank you for joining us tonight in our virtual Napa Valley Unified School District Board meeting held exclusively online. We are in uncharted territory as we deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to thank all of our employees again, our families and the entire MVUSD community on how you've supported each other and come together during these unprecedented times. I would like to also thank staff that have worked very so hard in having this meeting tonight in accordance with the revised open meeting rules in the state of California for the governor's order. I'm gonna to start tonight with some basic instructions on how we're going to be using Zoom and involve the members, members of the community. All board, mem all board of trustees and the superintendent are on video throughout the entire board meeting. Staff members are also present, but by audio only. Members of the community will not be on video and will be muted except during public comment. During public comment, any member of the community that wishes to speak must raise their hand uses using the raise hand feature in Zoom. You will be unmuted and you will be provided three minutes to speak. We also, we would also like to inform the community that we have translation services available in Spanish and Tagalog for any speaker needing translation. Please not, let us know as soon as you are unmuted if you need a Spanish or Tagalog translation and our translators will be ready to assist. Can we have the Spanish translator repeat? También queremos avisarle a la comunidad que le tenemos disponibles servicios de traducción e interpretación al español y al tagalog. Eh, por favor, avísenos cuando estén eh, listos para hablar durante el, el, la, la parte pública si necesitan interpretaciones de español o al tagalog. Y es, los eh, intérpretes estarán listos para servirles. Thank you. If we can have that translated in tagalog, please. Magandang gabi po. Ako po si Dennis Castro. Ako po ang tagapsalin ng Tagalog. Kung gusto po magsalita, meron po kayong tatlong minuto. Igamit niyo po yung raise hand feature dun sa Zoom niyo para pwede kayong magsalita. Meron po kaming tagasalin sa Espanyol at sa Tagalog para makatulong sa inyo. So humingi po kayo ng tagapsalin o ng interpreter kung gusto niyo po. Kung kailangan niyo po, nandito po kami ng Espanyol at Tagalog para sa inyong servisyo. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Um, 
Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but before proceeding, I just wanted to do a quick check-in with our student board member, um, Alondra Madrigal. And the, Alondra, would you like to join by video or by um, audio only? Audio only. Great, thank you. Thank you. There are two ways to make a public comment within the time allotted for public comment on an eligible agenda item. To comment by video conference, Click the raise your hand button to request speak when public comment is being taken on the eligible agenda item. When it is your turn to speak, your name will be called out. You will then be unmuted during your turn and allowed to make public comment. After the allotted time, you will then be remuted. Instructions on how to raise your hand are available on the district website at mbusd.org forward slash board. To comment by phone, you will be prompted to raise your hand by presenting star nine to request to speak when public comment is being taken on the eligible agenda item. When it is your turn to speak, the last four digits of your phone number will be called out. You will then be unmuted during your time and allowed to make public comment. After the allotted time, you will then be remuted. Instructions on how to raise your hand by phone are also available on the district website at mbusd.org forward slash board. In addition, community members were allowed to submit comments via email at public comment at mbusd.org up until 8 a.m. this morning. Any comments received via email will also be read into the public record. For every agenda item, I will prompt the meeting participants who have joined us via Zoom for public comment. Please follow the instructions just provided when you would like to comment on an item. Before we begin, I would like to thank everyone for their patience as we navigate this new technology, we continue to learn how to conduct business under these circumstances. We have been called to order and conduct our attendance roll call. We will go forward with our agenda. Do we have on E1 report on closed session items by, John, by Trustee Jankowitz? Good evening, closed session report. Personnel, in closed session, the board took action to approve the following staff recommendation. Effective July 1st, 2020, the following administrative staffing assignment will be made. Elizabeth Gonzalez to the position of Director 3, Human Resources. That is the report from closed session. Thank you. Um, Julie Pressy would read comments from, from our email. Do we have any public comments on non-agenda items um, from Julie Pressy? No public comment on non-agenda items was received by email. Okay, thank you very much. Before I proceed to um, or actually, I'm sorry, we're going to go ahead and um, we got a report from closed session. We're going to start with our flag salute. And if uh, Trustee Gracia would lead us, if all um, trustees would please mute your phone or excuse me, your Zoom and David Gracia would lead us in the flag salute. Give us one moment while we pull up the flag. Okay, someone will be sharing the flag, I hope. Yes. All right, everyone will please stand then. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Second, please. Okay. So this meeting is being recorded via Zoom and will be archived on the district YouTube channel. Um, before I move to E4 approval and agenda, I do have um, um, I, I need to say this to our board before and to the general public before we move on. Uh, before we vote on the approval of the agenda, I would like to point out that action item K1D was added to the agenda after the agenda was already posted. And because it is a late addition, it needs special approval from the board. This item requests board approval for, to update three administrative regulations simply to ensure that contact information for both the district's Title IX coordinators is included where the Title IX coordinators are referenced. 
The Brown Act permits the board to make a late addition like this if the board finds that one, there is a need to take immediate action, and two, the need for action came to the attention of the district subsequent to the agenda being posted. The motion to add this item based on a need that arose subsequent to the agenda being posted must be approved by a two thirds vote of the full board or by unanimous vote if less than two thirds of the board is present. Uh, representatives from the California Department of Education, CDE, have been conducting an on-site federal program monitoring review, it is an FPM, of the district's educational equity programs. The Board of Education's May 14, 2020 agenda was posted on May 8, 2020. On Monday, May 11, 2020, CDE consultants brought to the district's attention that contact information for both of the district's two Title IX coordinators are not reflected in the district's, excuse me, in the district's administrative regulations where the Title IX issues are addressed. Thus, district determined, excuse me, determined the changes needed, to, needed in response to the consultant's review after the agenda had been posted. These corrections must be made this week to permit an addenda to be sent to district families and stakeholders concerning these updates. Sufficient time for the FPM team to review revisions to the documents under review and before the FPM on-site monitoring review is scheduled for completion on Friday, May 29th. These are the reasons that action tonight is needed. needed. Accordingly, I am making a motion that pursuant government code section 54954.2b that the board approve the addition of action item K1D based on the board's finding that there is a need to take immediate action on items that came to the district's attention after agenda was posted. Will someone second the motion? I will. Second. So a first by myself and a second by Mr. David Gracia. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nays, abstentions, motion carries. Thank you very much. Now with that said, and I might just ask maybe Mr. Um, do I still need an approval of, of the entire agenda or was that, okay, approval of the agenda. So moved. I have a first by Mr. Gracia. A second. And a second by Mr. Jose Hurtado. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nays? Abstentions? Student representative? Sorry, Alondra. Aye. <laughs> okay. Motion carries. Okay. We will move on to letter F, recognition of student of the month. Dr. Massetti. Yes. Mr. Ruiz, will we be putting the presentation up? Great, thank you. So um, of course, um, given the conditions imposed upon us by COVID-19, uh, one of the favorite parts of our board meetings are recognizing our students of the month and we have greatly missed them because of those um, impositions uh, by COVID-19 not allowing us to meet in person um, and have our students being rec recognized across our secondary schools come into the boardroom with their family and friends cheering them on as they hear their site principal talk about all of the amazing things that these students are accomplishing in our schools and in their lives um, and we also miss hearing directly for them from them um, as they receive the recognition so for the sake of efficiency, uh, given that our meetings are now solely online, uh, we did not want to skip the recognition of students of the month, but we also need to maintain efficiency in our meetings because of this new format. And so I'm just going to take a moment tonight to read the names of, of the students that are being recognized from New Technology High School, Vintage High School, NBIS, and Napa Valley Adult Education Foundation, so that the public is well aware of the students um, who are principals selected from these 
secondary schools uh, to honor this evening. So from uh, new technology, and, and we are a little backed up uh, because of the fact that we, we didn't do this over the course of the last couple meetings. And so um, we're gonna get ourselves caught up tonight. So from New Technology High School, we have Brianne Mendez and Isabella Toscano. From Vintage High School, we have Zoe Murphy and Matt Lewis. From Napa Valley Independent Studies, we have Z Seth Tensher and Chiara Costello. And then from Napa Valley Adult Education, our adult school, we have Corinne Parker Clay and Leonarda Calleros. So we want to thank um, all of our administrators for getting their recommendations in for this recogni recognition for these um, students and, and um, you know, our young people and our adults at our adult school that we know are doing amazing things out there to warrant this recognition. So congratulations to all of the students being recognized this month. Thank you very much. It's not quite the same, I know. I know, we don't get to hear the applause or I can see the, the picture. Yes, I can see the disappointment in the trust. No crying. <laughs> I know Corinne from the adult school, so Corinne Parker Clay, congratulations, and to all the students. Um, they will be getting their plaques, just so oh, you know, okay. we're still getting them their plaques, and um, Ms. Morales will be sending them to them via, via the mail. Thank you. Um, okay, so we are moving on to G, public comments on non-agenda items. Members of the audience may address the board on any school-related matter that is not on the agenda. Uh, the board will not take action on any issue raised during the section of the agenda in as much as board action is limited to posted agenda items. Speakers are requested to limit their comments to a maximum of three minutes. And because this is being recorded online, the timer does say when it's the three minutes are up, you will be muted. So thank you very much. Do we have any comments, Mr. Manny? Yes, President Martin, we do have uh, one comment. Justin Hall, I will um, unmute your mic and start the timer. Your mic is unmuted, Justin. Hello, everybody. Um, I just, I just sent me an email from Superintendent. So get away! I think we are you guys. That's just me. So get away! I can do that for you guys. So I can see you all. I'd love to be part of for me. Thank you, Mr. Hull. I did receive your email and I, I will reply. Do we have additional comments, Mr. Manny? No, President Martin, we do not have for any further comments at this moment. Okay, so we move on to H reports. Uh, Board of Education and Student Body Representatives. Alondra, would you like to kick us off in any comments? Yes, of course. So my name is Alondra and I am the Student Board Representative. And for today's report, I just want to shout the district out. Thank you guys for making something work for us seniors to get our graduation. I know it's not the same, but it's something. And all these Zoom classes are really good. Like they're going really good, they're smooth now. I think we all got the hang of it now. The teachers are still doing amazing and just a huge shout out to everybody in the district. And that's it, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. David Gracia. Yeah, I attended uh, the Facilities and Technology Committee meeting on April 28th and then on the 29th, the Curriculum and Student Support Committee. Uh, on the first, I attended the afternoon coffee with the superintendent, and then the fourth was a branding meeting where we discussed the possibility of adding color to the logo. Coloring the logo as dirt and a tree looked bad, so we're exploring options of using a palette of approximately four to five colors with maybe only two colors being used in any single combination. We started with a large group of colors and hoping to winnow it down a bit over the next few weeks. 
I also drove by McPherson and saw some of the good progress that is being made on getting up the new security fencing. Uh, it looks like the fencing around the baseball field is completely up while they're still working on fencing around the rest of the campus. And that is the end of my update. Mr. Joe Shunk. Uh, I've been keeping up on my professional development, attending various uh, CSBA and AXA webinars, trying to keep uh, track of what the folks in Sacramento are doing and the things uh, that people are talking about uh, that on how we might eventually reopen uh, the, the schools. Um, there is something uh, that quite strongly resembles a elementary school coming out of the ground at Eucalyptus and Wetlands Edge, uh, the new Napa Junction. And I saw uh, a couple of what appeared to be fencing contractors um, uh, uh, socially distancing while they worked at various fence posts and uh, on, on our, our fencing related projects at s some of the schools down here in American Canyon. Um, Ms. Water, Cindy Water. I too attended a Zoom meeting of the curriculum committee, the same one Mr. Gracia attended. I observed at a safe distance um, the, some the lunch giveaways, you know, at various points in the community. Uh, I took my second spin down by the new elementary school rising at um, American Canyon, and it's beautiful. I've been studying the Ed Code, and. I had a great time watching old videos of old school board meetings from 2010 and 2015. I, it was like visiting with old friends. Thank you, Ms. Water. Uh, Mr. Jose Urtado. Yes, I have uh, have uh, met or spoken to uh, several uh, parents about issues uh, regarding uh, uh, personnel and curriculum. I've uh, visited or walked on my daily walks. I've uh, gone by um, my local school um, and uh, uh, checked out the progress. So uh, I'm just at this point just meeting meeting uh, families and parents. Thank you, Jose. Ms. Robin Jankowitz. Um, I too attended via Zoom the Facilities and Technology Committee meeting. I too listened to the afternoon coffee with the superintendent, which I hope continue. I enjoy them immensely. I too attended the branding committee and I must um, politely disagree with David as I really love the combination of the logo just with dirt. It is my favorite. And um, I, along with Cindy, um, have looked at some old school board meetings and found them to be not only informative, but um, entertaining. Thank you. Um, Ms. Elba Gonzalez Mares. Yeah, I too attended the curriculum um, committee as well as the branding. And, um, and I think in my work with uh, community organizations active in, in disaster with handling um, in our groups the different um, ways that we can help our community and especially there's lots of questions about food. Um, I don't always have the answer because they um, our amazing um, NVUSD team and staff are the ones day in and day out so they think that I know all the answers so I might need to get um, some updates here from, from, from some of the, the staff to help me out here so I can help uh, communicate what the school district is doing because there's um, a lot of food insecurity in our community and that is just a question that is uh, being asked over and over in committees and um, with good reason they ask, well, where's, you know, where are we when it comes to that work, which we're doing a lot. Um, and then um, on my walks on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I pass by uh, West Park Elementary School and Pueblo Vista. 
and occasionally see Principal Redding running uh, with her Napa High shirt and we just, she's running and I'm walking and it's a quick wave early, early in the morning. Um, so it, um, definitely missing um, the families out and about in, in, the, in the freshly cut lawn at Pueblo Vista looks great, but not seeing the kiddos on it is, is, is really, it's tough to see, but I know we're all trying our best and our families are trying to hang in there. So continue to, to hang in there. So that's my report, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I, I wanted to congratulate uh, families from um, American Canyon and our Napa community as they are doing everything possible to make and make our seniors feel that this is their year still. Under these circumstances, I know it's really tough, but there are some amazing moms out there and dads that put together a, um, I hate to say this out loud, but it's an adoption program of your senior. So they're putting seniors up for adoption and the general public is adopting them and bringing um, to their homes little care packages of what each senior is into, whether that's you know gift cards to XYZ store, or a gift basket with their favorite treats. I'm sure it's not the healthiest, but um, it's something or a little recognition that's going on. So my son was um, actually adopted. As you know, he's a senior this year for Valley Oak High School. He was adopted by approximately, you can be adopted more than once. Um, he was adopted three, four times. So the gifts have been never ending and he was actually speechless. He received a package as far as Southern California with some banana nut bread that someone baked for him. So that was really, really sweet of this um, um, noble person that put this together. Um, with that said, um, I had a little, um, I wanted to take some time to say a little something to our graduates, if you don't mind, and then I'll pass the baton um, to um, Dr. Massetti and her staff. Um, quiero tomarme un tiempo de nuestra reunión de esta noche para reconocer a un grupo muy especial, nuestros graduados de la preparatoria de clase 2020. Esta clase es única, como todos los graduados que trabajaron de manera diligente. Se desafiaron a sí mismos e hicieron conexiones que darán forma a su futuro. Y esta clase llegó a su último año. Listos para celebrar sus logros con sus compañeros de clase y aceptar plenamente las tradiciones que hacen que los años de último año sean tan especiales. Pero eso fue interrumpido por una pandemia mundial que nadie y ninguno de nosotros ha experimentado en nuestras vidas. Pero has perseverado. Has terminado el trabajo de una manera diferente y por eso te celebramos esta noche también de una manera diferente. A medida que avanza hacia nuevos desafíos y experiencias, aprovecharé este momento, esta experiencia, un tiempo de desilusión, un tiempo de resistencia y un tiempo de aprendizaje. Nuevamente de una manera diferente, clase de 2020 en nombre de la mesa directiva del Distrito Escolar Unificado del Valle de Napa, felicitamos, te felicitamos por tu graduación, la mejor de la suerte para todos ustedes. I wanted to take a time out of our meeting tonight to recognize a very special group, our high school graduates of class of 2020. This class is unique. Like all graduates, they have worked hard, challenged themselves, and made connections that will shape their future. And this class made it to their senior year, ready to celebrate their accomplishments with their classmates and fully embrace the traditions that make senior year so special. But that was cut short by a worldwide pandemic that none of us had ever experienced in our lifetime. But you have per persevered, you have finished the tough work in a different way, and so we salute you tonight also in a very different way. As you move on to new challenges and experiences, you will draw on this time, th this experience. A time of disappointment, a time of resilience, and a time of learning, again in a different way. Class of 2020, on behalf of the Board of Education of NVUSD, Congratulations on your graduation. Best of luck to all of you. Ms. Dr. Massetti. Yay, so applause. Thank you, President Martin, for that uh, message for the class of 2020. As we kick off celebrating our graduates, it's sort of graduate season given the circumstances, we wanna find all kinds of special and unique ways 
to recognize our class of 2020. So thank you for doing that on behalf of the school board this evening. I wanna say good evening to the trustees, to the staff and to the community. I appreciate your reports because you touched on all the areas where the district is working diligently in these unusual circumstances. You reported out on construction, technology, graduation, food distribution and distance learning, all um, areas of work that are keeping our staff very, very busy as we aim to continue school for our students in these very trying times. Um, so I'm going to try and keep my report this evening brief as we aim to get to work on our agenda items. Um, and I do want to allow some dedicated time during the staff reports. We do have a special presentation as part of staff reports for our Assistant Superintendent uh, Rabinder Rob Mangwala to give us some insight on the state budget and the implications for California public schools given the global economic pro uh, uh, crisis. Since we know many of our families and community members may have heard Governor Newsom's budget proposal earlier today. So I'll proceed with my report and then um, toss to the assistant superintendents. So as our NVUSD community knows, uh, we're about to complete week nine. It's pretty unbelievable. Week nine of distance learning and managing the response to the COVID-19 school campus and facilities closure. Again, I don't feel like I can express gratitude and recognition enough every public opportunity I get to do. Um, an expression of gratitude and thank you. I, I take that opportunity. I wanna thank everyone again for their support, collaboration, adaptability in these trying times, including the school board. First, I'd like to thank explicitly our students who have demonstrated resilience and positive attitudes in ways that many of us adults could never even imagine. Again, to our class of 2020, uh, we celebrate you. You've demonstrated so much character and a growth mindset in the midst of, of disappointment and you are our role models and will continue to be role models. To all of our parents out there who during the greatest act of global solidarity to shelter in place to fight a pandemic have had to manage being overwhelmed by juggling schooling at home during an emergency, their own jobs, and any personal stresses associated with the financial implications of COVID-19 in their homes. To our staff in a time of distress and disappointment Many of you have modeled commitment, a passion for learning that transcends any conditions, and of course, an ability to rise when the going gets tough. I know all of this has us very anxious, emotional, and even exhausted, but I encourage us, the adults, to approach the situation with a growth mindset for our children so they can observe us staying positive in the midst of struggle. They are watching our reactions to these hard times and to this disappointment, and they're observing us doing the best we can when challenges overwhelm us. So I challenge us as adults to continue to model that pos positivity for them as much as possible. Lastly, I wanna really thank the Measure H voters. Um, I cannot imagine having survived um, the, the COVID-19 situation without having Measure H here in NBUSD. And so I cannot thank the voters um, uh, uh, of, of, of the area, the Measure H vote voters for the support that they demonstrated for their local public schools, which positioned us to provide the technology necessary um, for our students. Many school districts were not able to deliver on that. I got some messages just today, just some really timely messages where individual parents were expressing gratitude because they have family members in other districts or other states where there have not been computers um, distributed, where student learning has not continued, where teachers have not been able to deliver on any form of distance learning. And so that was just a reminder to, um, to, to stay in a, in a sense of gratitude. In the next couple of weeks, um, I do wanna let the community know, staff, parents, um, just community members at large, that we do anticipate more guidelines. Uh, Trustee Shunk alluded to this. Um, that are coming from the California Department of Education, De California Department of Education regarding industry guidance on opening our schools for the fall of 2021. The most recent information released from State Superintendent Tony Thurman states that individual school districts will have the authority to determine reopening dates, working in partnership with local county offices of education and, of course, the public health officials in the region. Future decisions will be made in conjunction with Napa County Public Health to ensure the health and safety of our students and communities. So we continue to collaborate closely with our county uh, public health official, Dr. Relucio. NVUSD will be forming an ad hoc task force uh, to study the reopening of the 2021 issue 
and engage in scenario planning and will continue to update the community as plans unfold. We look forward to providing information about the fall as soon as possible. I know that parents want to begin planning accordingly and I know how frustrating it is to live in this high degree of uncertainty. However, uh, we have to balance the urgency people have around wanting answers immediately with the challenge of communicating too early given the ever-changing COVID-19 circumstances in the public health landscape. We thank students, families, and staff in advance for their patience as we start to vet out options, all while nav navigating the economic crisis ahead, which you'll hear about in a few minutes. We'll get through this. Please be well and stay safe. Our NVUSD kiddos need us more than ever. And so with that, I'm gonna to toss to Assistant Superintendent Dana Page, who will provide highlights from the Human Resources Division. Hey, thank you, Dr. Massetti, President Martin and Board of Trustees. It's been a bittersweet couple of weeks since the last board meeting. On a high note, last week we had the opportunity to celebrate our wonderful teachers on National Day of the Teacher. And if you haven't had a chance to watch the video, which is a compilation of submissions from our students, including videos and pictures, it's on our website and I encourage you to take a look at it. It's a little over four minutes long and it's really heartwarming and it confirms not only do we have the best teachers, but we also do have the best students. Uh, however, on a not so sweet note, at the same week, we concluded our hearings with an administrative law judge regarding teacher layoffs. Leading up to that, I worked with principals to verify staffing needs and we were able to rescind some notices uh, but at this time, we have to move forward to meet legal timelines for notification. I want to assure the board and the community that the work on staffing continues. As opportunities arise through attrition, we have people who are naturally retiring and resigning still. We will fill those vacancies with the people on the layoff list. We just now shift from rescinding notices to rehiring in order of seniority. It's complicated work, uh, we can't rush it, but we are giving it maximum attention in order to go as far as we can, as fast as we can. At the same time, I've also been calling and meeting with permanent teachers who have not been laid off, but who will need to move school sites in order to align with enrollment changes and vacancies. It's been tough for them as well to think about moving sites and all of the uncertainty that that change brings. All in all, I just wanna thank the many teachers I have been in communication with these past few weeks. Everyone has been exceedingly patient and professional in dealing with this turmoil, while also carrying on for their students and continuing distance learning. These are um, incredibly difficult times, but I'm proud of how we are managing as an organization, and I'm optimistic for better times in the future. Thank you, this concludes my report. Thank, Thank you, you, Ms. Page. I am, I'd like um, uh, 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 Assistant Superintendent, uh, Mr. Mike Pearson from Operational Services to give highlights from the Operational Services Division. Uh, thank you, Dr. Massetti. Good evening, President Martin, MVSD Board of Trustees, and members of the MVSD community. Thank you for the opportunity to provide each of you with an update with Operational Services. We continue to be a very busy organization. Um, with food, service, food services, we continue to provide five breakfast meals and five lunch meals each week along with either a produce bag or a pantry bag one day a week to our MBSG students and families. We are now serving over 14,400 meals each week, and this week we handed out our 100,000th meal since we started the emergency food distribution. MBSD Food Services will continue serving meals through the month of June, and our transportation department continues to play a crucial role in our food distribution effort, delivering meals to students and families at Napa Valley Language Academy, Yountville Community Center, uh, up in Lake Berryessa area at Moscow White Corner and to the homes of several special education students. Um, and under maintenance and operations, the directors of maintenance and operation and myself are gearing up for a new and unique manner in which we honor the class of 2020 during the week of June 1st through June 5th. We developed an action plan to execute on this incredibly important activity, collaborate closely with site administration, and look forward to the event occurring at each site. And finally, under our Measure H bond program, last night, the Measure H Citizens Bond Oversight Committee met we had a very successful meeting informing the community on the Measure H projects and expenditures to date. We also welcomed a new Bond Oversight Committee member, and we are still seeking more members to, this, to join this very important committee. So if you are interested, please reach out to me and I will help you out with the application process. This concludes my report for tonight. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Pearson. Thank you. And I'd like to invite Assistant Superintendent, uh, Ms. Pat Andrew Jennings, who will provide a report from the Instructional Services Division. Um, good, evening. <laughs> good evening, uh, President Martin and trustees and Dr. Rossetti. Um, during the nine weeks of distance learning, our dedicated instructional staff have been hard at work as they continue to refine their distance learning teaching practices. We continue to offer trainings for our teachers um, in the use of distance learning tools, knowing that um, there's a possibility of continued distance learning sometime in the fall. Um, we will also be launching a survey for parents, students, and staff regarding the impact of school closures um, to, provide, to provide us with feedback um, as we plan for the reopening of schools next year, um, and also as we await more clarity on what will be possible. Um, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Um, Andrew Jennings. And so our last assistant superintendent to report out tonight is Rabinder Rob Mangwala, the assistant superintendent of business services, who will also include a short financial presentation describing the potential economic impacts due to COVID-19 and some preliminary highlights from Governor Newsom's budget proposal that was presented today. Uh, Mr. Reese, can you please share the screen? Thank you. Good evening. Thank you very much for the opportunity to provide an analysis of the Department of Finance projections and the May revise, uh, some preliminary information about the May revise. Next slide, please. So as background, the, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused an unprecedented global and national economic slowdown. The, the pace that our economy um, has come to a halt is almost unfathomable. In an effort to provide relief to families and businesses, the deadline to file for state and federal taxes was extended to July 1st, 2020. Um, the extension of the tax deadline has made national and state budget projections exceptionally difficult in terms of projection. The Department of Finance recently came out with their economic forecast, which informs the governor's budget and the May revise, which will recur officially on May 19th. The purpose of this presentation is to share the Department of Finance update and speak about possible implications for the Napa Valley Unified School District. This slide demonstrates um, where do state revenues come from. And so you can see 67% of personal income, uh, it forms the budget. The other 18.4% comes from sales and use tax and corporate taxes at 10.4%. So, so we know with the extension of the tax deadline, there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of what personal income tax will look like. Again, this was um, extended until July 1st. We also know that sales have, have gone, on, gone down dramatically. People are primarily focusing on bare necessities like food, which does not generate sales tax. Uh, and corporations, we're also starting to see large corporate failures, which, which, will, which will continue to increase over time. Next slide, please. In terms of where we spend our dollars, you can see that the state spends 34.7% on schools and 4.2% on community colleges. So in terms of the, the governor's need to make um, budget cuts, there will be definitely a, a large impact, which I'll speak about later, to schools and community colleges. Next slide. This slide uh, demonstrates a gross domestic product. Gross domestic product is a measure of all goods and services in an economy. And you can see going back to 2001, except for the Great Recession, uh, real gross domestic product kind of sat in what they called is a, like a Goldilocks area where you don't see really, really strong inflation. The economy is growing at about the 2%, 2 to 3% area, which, which is, is good for long-term growth. However, you can see right now in 2020, the economy suddenly dropped uh, by 26.5%. Next slide, please. So we are currently in a recession. Um, the question is how long will it last? Will it be a U-shaped, L-shaped, or B-shaped? And so what, what those letters refer to is a, a U-shaped re recession tends to take spend some time on the bottom and then it recovers. L-shaped means that the economy drops and does not recover for an extended period of time. And V-shape is more of a sudden recovery. So, or could it be, or could there be something resembling a depression? So, gross domestic product or the total value of all goods and services, um, as I mentioned in the previous slide, decreased by 26.5 percent 
Um, to put this in perspective, gross domestic product declined by 25% during the Depression from 1929 to 1933. So very sudden, large uh, decline expected for gross domestic product. In terms of unemployment, one in five are unemployed in California as a result of COVID. And th this is uh, especially harmful for our low-income low families. So our low-income families, the unemployment rate right now is two in five or approximately 40%. The overall budget deficit is $54.8 billion. And uh, for education, our portion of that is $18.3 billion. Next slide, please. Some of the challenges for the May revise is, is that in, instead of getting a cost of living adjustment of about 2.3%, which is what was initially proposed uh, in, in the January budget, it looks like right now that we'll have a pro approximately cut, approximate cut of 7.7% in LCFF funding. Uh, there will be a 10% reduction in state preschool reimbursement rates, um, $100 million in cuts to ACES, a 50% reduction in CTE incentive grants and strong workforce, various other cuts to categorical programs, um, and elimination of pretty much all new programs that were proposed in January. Uh, and there'll be deferrals, which means that, that, that um, we will receive our, our cash late. Next slide. So some of the strengths in the proposal is that they're, they are proposing um, a buy down of both STRS and PERS rates, which we're going to go up. And so potentially we're gonna see some relief in the area of 2% of both STRS and PERS rates. Um, they will also retain um, some additional funding uh, for uh, SELPA base rates for special education. Um, the big unknown is that there is some one-time investment of $4.4 billion to local education agencies to address learning loss related to COVID-19. Uh, we'll be examining this and studying this closely to see um, how that will impact Napa Valley Unified School District to see if we can use this to help some of our students address learning loss. Uh, and then also one of the other big changes is the use of funds from the sale of excess property um, from the general fund to help meet reserve requirements. Next slide. So this slide addresses some of the things that happened during the uh, Great Recession. This is kind of referred to as the Great Recession playbook. So in terms of what do we need to see happen or, or, or what, in terms of what we need to do and some potential things coming out of the state. Uh, again, a continuation of, of cash deferrals, which is, you could think of it almost, you know, again, you're taking money from one year, you're accounting for it at the government level in one year, but then you're paying it in the next year. So it's considered a cash deferral which continues to grow. It impacts us in the sense that we need to make sure that we have enough cash, um, potentially a shorter school year and furlough days, um, categorical resource flexibility, and then potentially a change in routine restricted maintenance. Next slide. So some of the challenges and next steps. So we need to continue to work closely with, with our unions. Um, we know that some of the work that we need to do with our budget is definitely we need to negotiate that. Um, continue to obtain, obtain the best information possible, possible and communicate to cabinet. Um, continue with the budget adoption process. Work with cabinet to closely examine our expenditures. Um, watch cash closely and set, sell our TRAN. So again, a, a TRAN is a tax revenue anticipation note. What we do is we, we borrow money and then pay it back during the same year. This allows us to continue to make payroll and other necessary payments when we receive cash late. Um, we need to continue to assess all of our assets for revenue generation, um, work closely with human resources to staff in tight alignment with enrollment and budgetary expe expectations, um, advocate for school district funding at the legislative level. And then the final bullet is absent legislative and federal relief, most school districts will have a very difficult time present presenting a balanced budget. And so we do have some challenges in front of us. Uh, and again, we, we will hear additional information at the May revise next week. This concludes my report. Thank you, Rob. Now, moving on to item I, approval of consent agenda. Background information on these items is provided to the board prior to the meeting. A common motion takes action without discussion on a roll call vote, unless discussion of items is requested by the board members. I would like to pull I-4A and otherwise move to approve. Okay. Second. 
Uh, but first by Mr. David Gracia and a second by Mr. Joe Shunk. All those in favor? Roll call. Oops, excuse me, roll call. <laughs> Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Gonzalez Mares? Aye. Trustee Jenkowitz? Aye. Trustee Water? Aye. Trustee Hurtado? Aye. Trustee Shunk? Aye. Trustee Gracia? Aye. Student Trustee Madrigal? Aye. Uh, proceed, Mr. Uh, Trustee Gracia. Thank you. Uh, I was looking at the I-4A item, which is the renewal of service contract between Precision Translations and the Napa Valley Unified School District. <clears throat> and we have discussed in the past that this provider doesn't always do a great job in providing a Spanish translation in a manner that is easily understood in our community. This translation service often results in messages that might sound right at home in Spain, but that sometimes can be confusing to our constituents. I am dismayed to see them back for a second time on the school agenda, as I had hoped that we would have found a replacement by now. While I understand the need for translation services and support their provision, I had hoped that we could find a better service provider to serve our families. Um, President Martin, I'm, I'm going to, uh, can I, can I respond for a moment? So I, I want to appreciate Trustee Gracia's feedback. Thank you so much. Um, this is obviously, yes, a conversation that we've had over the course of um, my now couple of years here. Um, translation services are absolutely critical to the work that we do. You know, first under the umbrella of uh, more effective communication, which we've tried to dramatically improve in the school district. And then kind of under that umbrella of improved communication, and I'm very happy that the board has charged me with that task. We've been working hard um, on that goal in our strategic plan and trying to improve internal and external communication. And of course, given our linguistic demographic, this means that we need to have high quality uh, translation, comprehensible trans translation in currently in our, with our linguistic demographic, we're, we're primarily focusing on the Spanish speaking Latino community. Um, I will, just like we are looking at all contracts, um, you know, I've been doing that slowly over the course of the last couple of years, given Mr. Manguala's recent um, presentation, all contracts are being examined for cost efficiency and of course all, also for quality. And, um, you know, given what's going on right now with COVID-19 and the abrupt changes that the district's been facing, um, you know, we just didn't quite have bandwidth to start considering what an alternative may look like in the immediate future. But um, it's an issue that remains on the to-do list to examine and make sure that we have the highest quality of translation for our Spanish-speaking Latino community. And you have my commitment to continue to, um, to you know, take the matter seriously and give it uh, my attention. Any other discussion on this item? I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. A first by Mr. Gracia and a second by Mr. Jose Hurtado. Roll call. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Gonzalez Mares. Aye. Trustee Jankowitz. Aye. Trustee Water. Aye. Trustee Hurtado. Aye. Trustee Shunk. Aye. Trustee Gracia. Aye. Student Trustee Madrigal. Thank you. Moving forward, presentation and discussion items, J, J1 General Services, uh, public hearing, redistricting, and transition to by trustee area elections for November 2020 and BUSD Board of Education elections in compliance with the California Voting Rights Act. And um, I will open this, uh, or excuse me, um, Dr. Massetti, will we have a presentation prior to opening up for public hearing? Yes, yeah, so um, we have our um, demographer partners and consultants um, on the line. We have Corinne uh, McDonald and Tamina Alon. Um, Ms. Alon and Ms. McDonald, you will be uh, providing the public with just the visuals of final draft, final draft map one, final draft map two, correct? You need to unmute. Available. Oh, there you are. 
Hello, good evening, Dr. Massetti. This is Karen McDonald. It's nice to see everyone. Uh, hello, trustees. Um, I, um, I believe that Tamina, as soon as she unmutes herself, would like to um, show you the two finalist maps and then just walk you very briefly through um, the various items that she has considered uh, when she created those maps. And um, as soon as she's done with that, um, then we will mute ourselves and you can take it from there. Please remember that you are able to ask for detail on any map. We can zoom in and um, explain um, whatever you need to see and whatever you would like to get further explanations about. And uh, you can then also ask for us to make changes to the map. And with that, I will pass it on to Tamina. Thank you. Tamina is muted. Tamina, you have to unmute yourself. We still can't hear you, Tamina. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, fantastic. I apologize for that. Good evening, everyone. So we are reviewing today Finalist map one and finalist map two, are you able to see them on your screens? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So this is finalist map one. I'd like to tell you a little bit about this. This was um, a map that combined the top of draft map C with the modified bottom of draft map D. And so this area toward the north is where the C map was kept intact and then the D map was observed in the south. The public comments which were honored in this map include keeping the vintage high families uh, community of interest together in the 1A district, keeping Vichy and Yunfil Khoi together in the 1A district, keeping Vichy River and Willow schools together in the 1A district uh, and addressing the concerns of no schools being in the district keeping Trower Dry Creek Koi together in 1B, separating Browns Valley from unincorporated West Pueblo area, keeping West Pueblo area Koi together in 1C district, keeping the Old Town Napa Abajo Koi together in 1E district, keeping the downtown together, keeping the downtown district from draft map C, which is 1E over here, and used to be C4, and adding the Silverado to the downtown, which is this little area here, which you requested at the end of our last meeting. Keeping together all of the neighborhoods that make up the Old Town in central Napa and cross the Napa River at the first street bridge into Alta Heights, which is a historic neighborhood. Keeping both draft map districts C4 and D6 modified in the same map. So this was the C4, which became 1E and then D6 became 1G and it is modified in that it does not have the little tail that came out here and the one line that came up this way, making it more compact. This divides along major streets, though not through Foster, and respects major geographic definers, keeps NVLA harvest and snow together in the 1F district, keeps the Westwood community of interest together in the 1F district, keeps the Tree Street community of interest together in 1F district, keeps the State Streets community of interest together in 1F district, keeps the American Canyon district from map D, which was D6, and makes it more compact, keeps the city of American Canyon primarily intact, creates an American Canyon district, which does not touch Napa, which would be 1G, it gives uh, American Canyon district crosses over 29, and that's in 1G as well, ensures at least two NVUSD schools in each district, and every district touches Napa proper except for 1G. 1G. The population of American Canyon in 1G is 16,595, which is 85.3% of that city. The population of American Canyon in 1F is 2,859, which is 14.7% of that city. 
We do have one community of interest, which was divided in this map, and that's the neighborhood schools community of interest, which is divided between 1D, 1E, and 1C. Moving on to finalist map number two. Finalist map number two was started by combining the top of draft map D up here with the bottom of draft map C. The different public interest comments which were considered in this map, which were honored in this map, were uh, keeping the, sorry, splitting, creating the split along Salvador up in the north in 1A, though the vintage high families Koi is split between 2A and 2B. It was suggested that the split be made along Salvador, and so that's this, this map does do that. It keeps Vichy and the Yunfil Koi together in 2A, keeps Vintage and Vichy in 2A to address the concerns of no schools in the district, keeps Trower and the Dry Creek community of interest together in District 2B, it keeps the West Pueblo community of interest together in 2C, keeps Old Town and Napa Abajo community of interest together in 2E. This map divides along major streets, through, though not through Foster, and respects major geographic definers. It keeps Harvest and Snow together in 2G, keeps Westwood, Harvest and Snow schools, I apologize, together in 2G, keeps the Westwood community of interest together in 2B, keeps the Tree Streets community of interest together in 2G, keeps the state's community of interest together in 2G, keeps Silverado schools with the downtown 2E, respects the Highway 29 divider and fixes the compactness issue in draft district C6, which was this area up here, keeps the East-West American Canyon community of interest together in 2F, gives the American Canyon community a possibility of electing a representative in two districts, American Canyon Residents make up 37.3% of 2G and 80.5% of 2F. It ensures at least two NVUSD schools in each district. And in this map, every district touches Napa proper. The population of American Canyon in 2F is 13,292. That is 68.3%. Population of American Canyon in 2G is 6,162, which is 31.7% of the city. The community of interest divided in this map is neighborhood schools, which is divided between 2D and 2E. I'm now happy to take any questions or zoom up on any areas if there's any particular sections you would like to look at. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I do have to open this up for um, uh, public hearing, and then after we hear public uh, discussion, we can go into discussion item, discussing the item, excuse me. Um, Mr. Ruiz, do we have any uh, public comment? And I'm now opening this officially to public hearing, so um, if we do have any public hearing, please let us know, Mr. Ruiz. President Martin, before we go to the live public comment, I, I have been notified by the administrative support staff that there was a one submitted uh, at 4.21 p.m. today via email, so I'd like to read it for the record. Okay. Um, American Canyon is a growing city and has been the center of student growth for the NVUSD for the past decade. It is highly likely that with the additional building projects approved for American Canyon, that this growth engine will be restarted soon despite the current pandemic. Therefore, especially in light of the NBUSD's ongoing poor treatment of the residents and students in American Canyon, it is imperative that of the two map options being considered for district-based elections starting in 2020, map two be selected. Map two gives American Canyon the possibility of having two trustees on the NBUSD board which should improve the odds of better treatment for this wonderfully diverse community, which makes up over 25% of the non-charter school student population as of the 2018-2019 for the NVUSD. Thank you for your consideration. Okay. Mr. Reese, do we have any public comment? Mr. Martin, we do have some public comment. Uh, we'll start with Jason Kishineff. 
Jason, I will um, allow you to talk. You, you can unmute your mic. I won't show the timer, but I will give you a warning uh, once the timer, if, if the timer expires. Mr. Kishinoff, you're you are allowed to unmute your mic. Mr. Kishinoff. He had he had his hand raised, so maybe maybe he's not. Let's, let's move on to the next person. Let's see. Um, Katie Aaron. I've unmuted your I've allowed you to talk. Go ahead and unmute your mic Hello. and yes. Hello. Okay. Hello. Good evening. I have sat in multiple committee and board meetings over the last 15 years where I've become increasingly concerned about the us versus them dialogue and the lack of knowledge about the schools in the district and their needs. I became more aware of this in the recent conversations that took place over not building the middle school in American Canyon and the closing of small schools in Napa and Yachtville. The comments have led me to believe that there truly is a lack of unified knowledge among several community members across the district. This us versus them really isn't about American Canyon versus Napa, but instead people not being able to see beyond their own neighborhood school. People not being able to see beyond their own elementary, middle or high school and how those decisions at those schools impact all schools. This is why I support the representation to be to not be in one small area, such as a small quadrant of American Canyon. Representing an elementary, middle and high school in different neighborhoods would force the representative to see the unified district as a whole. I encourage the board to support map two that has district reps who cross into different cities from Yauntville to Napa and to American Canyon while also having small communities of interest within their own district. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aaron. Um, Valerie Wolf. Hello. Uh, good evening, Superintendent. Musetti and NVUSD board. My name is Valerie Wolf and I'm speaking tonight on behalf of the Napa County Progressive Alliance. First, we wanna thank you for proceeding with the districting process in time for the 2020 election. We thank our attorney, Scott Rafferty, <clears throat> excuse me, whose extensive work from pre-letter research through final advocacy reflects his passion for voting rights. We also wanna thank your demographer for her consensus seeking approach to districting and her efforts to incorporate the feedback she gained from the public in terms of their communities of interest into the mapping process. Lastly, we wanna thank you for your thoughtful deliberation at the last meeting as you analyzed the various maps based on your personal knowledge of the neighborhoods as Napa residents. We can tell you understand the concept of communities of interest and the importance of maintaining them. And we hope that informs your decision tonight between two very different maps. Our takeaway from the last meeting was that there was general support for the American Canyon districts in map D, which would guarantee at least one representative on the board from American Canyon, but that the board favored the Napa districts in map C, which better reflected neighborhoods. We believe that the map we submit, submitted combines those two interests as does as does the demographer's finalist map one and would support the adoption of both of those maps. However, we cannot support finalist map two as it divides American Canyon into two parts, combining each district with a portion of South Napa, which would not only dilute the vote of American Canyon residents generally and its Filipino population, a protected group specifically, but could result in American Canyon having no representative on the NVUSD board. At earlier, at earlier board meetings, American Canyon residents stated their preference, <coughs> excuse me, 
for two seats on the board. After the draft maps were released, it became apparent that American Canyon does not have the population to have two guaranteed seats. American Canyon residents began sending emails stating that they do not wish to be divided by Highway 29 and prefer to have one guaranteed seat with the possibility of gaining a second over the possibility of having none at all. Fortunately, we had the opportunity to read those emails before they were mysteriously taken down from the NVUSD website. Our personal conversations with ind individuals we know from Mer American Canyon have revealed the same preference. The Filipino population in American Canyon provided the legal basis for this change. Uh, we therefore ask that the board give priority to maintaining this particular community of interest, <coughs> balancing it with the others, which we believe our map and finalist map one do by choosing uh, one of these maps. In conclusion, a recent Napa Valley Register uh, article discussed two, candidate, two candidates who, who are beginning to campaign uh, for Napa. And um, I can't get to the bottom of my, my uh, statement. Um, hold on just a second. My computer's not allowing me to read. There we go. In conclusion, our recent Napa Valley Register article discussed two candidates who are beginning to campaign for Napa City Council under the city's new district election system. The article already revealed some of the new system's benefits as it described candidates out walking and exploring their districts to get to know them better and identifying needs specific to their area. We believe the same will be true for the Napa Valley Unified School District. And in the end, voters, voters will appreciate your efforts and that the board will be enriched and elevated as a result. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wolf. If that looks to conclude um, our public speakers at the, on this topic, President Martin. Actually, Norma, Martin, Norma Ortiz would like to speak as well. Give, sorry about that. See. Yeah. Um, one second, and before we go to Ms. Norma Ortiz, um, uh, Ms. Um, Wolf, who just provided public comment, I also received your public comment via email for the public record. It was after the time, um, but I just noticed in review of what you submitted via email, it was um, exactly what you read. So I am not going to submit this to the public record. as you have. So thank you for your request. All right, we can proceed. Okay. Ms. Ortiz, you are able to speak. Hello, Mano? Yes. Ah, gracias. Eh, buenas tardes a todos los presentes, a todos los integrantes de la mesa directiva, doctora Musetti y el público en general. Voy a eh, empezar con dos preguntas importantes para ILAC, TILAC. Eh, la primera, ¿cuál es, eh, ¿cuáles son las posibles consecuencias presupuestales que pudieran potencialmente existir ante un cambio de áreas de votación, redistribución? Y en caso de ser así, la segunda pregunta, ¿cómo pudiera verse afectada la educación y aprendizaje de nuestros hijos? Eh, voy a continuar. Señora Ortiz, deja que la traductora uh, traduce, le vamos a dar doble el tiempo para la traducción. Gracias. Okay. Go ahead. So first of all, thank you for, uh, thank you, Dr. Massetti and the general public. Uh, I have two important questions. Uh, the first is, what are the consequences, the budgetary consequences of changes uh, to the area of, of distribution? And the second is in the redistricting, what would be the result with the, uh, for the education of our children? I'm sorry, I think I missed the last question. Señora, podría por favor revisar? Voy a, voy a repetir las, las dos preguntas. Gracias, por... thank you. ¿Cuáles son las posibles, posibles consecuencias presupuestales que pudieran potencialmente existir ante un cambio de áreas de votación, eh, redistribución. Ok. So, what are the possible uh, budgetary, um, potentially, uh, uh, effects that could be, could, 
could happen uh, before a possible change of areas of uh, voting or distribution? Y la segunda? Y en caso de ser así, ¿cómo pudiera haberse afectada la educación y aprendizaje de nuestros hijos? And in, in, in the event that uh, there were changes such as those, what would be the results for the education of our, of our children? Eh, voy a seguir. Okay. Uh, tengo permiso para seguir o, o quieren eh, regresar a las preguntas. ¿Qué sería conveniente, doctora? Do I have permission to continue or do you want to return to the questions? What would be the most convenient, doctor? Señor Ortiz, no podemos eh, estar contestando preguntas durante esto, entonces nomás está compartiendo sus uh, preguntas y comentarios por, uh, para consideración y la mesa directiva después puede discutir la, los temas que está, um, que está presentando en este momento. Gracias. Mrs. Ortiz, uh, at the moment we cannot answer questions. Uh, we will, uh, we will uh, take your comments for consideration. Uh, you are just presenting your, your comments at the moment. Eh, de antemano sigo, de antemano les agradezco sinceramente a todos, eh, todos que les interese abarcar, eh, entender y hasta considerar la perspectiva de DILAC en este tema tan importante, pero un cuanto complejo, tocante a la redistribución LCAP. So, voy a hacer pausas para la, la traducción respectiva, por favor. Gracias. Yes, yes. So, before, before, uh, from, uh, Firstly, I'd like to thank uh, the willingness to undertake and consider the persp perspective of DILAC in this very, very important and complex uh, change in health. Tocante la, uh, mencioné, tocante la redistribución LCAP, L LCAP por favor. Uh, having to do with the redistribution of LCAP. Slide, okay. Sin embargo, nuestro principal interés y primordial función en el plano de la educación como latinos es primero cumplir con nuestro compromiso como comité asesor de aprendices de inglés de este distrito, entre otros temas, eh, tantos temas respecto a la enseñanza de nuestros hijos. So, uh, our principal task uh, in, as far as our our uh, commitment to the Latino population is to fulfill our role as the evaluator as the uh, committee to evaluate the education of our children. De nuestros hijos, continúa, señora. A lo, que quiero, a lo que quiero llegar con este punto es que eh, muchos de nuestros padres latinos, sin atreverme a hacer una general, generalización porque no sería justa, trabajan largas horas. Algunas familias no han contado e inclusive han tenido muy poca oportunidad, conocimiento y experiencia en participar en sus gobiernos locales, gobiernos municipales, gobiernos escolares, etc. So what I, what I want to get to is that many, and I don't want to generalize, but I want to say that many Latinos work long hours and they have not had the opportunity to participate in their local governments, in their municipal governments. Entonces, esto pudiera traer alguna posible desventaja en nuestra comunidad latina aquí, al no estar de vida y amplia, ampliamente informados en su totalidad en estos temas eh, tan complejos para poder cumplir con un importante propósito, fin, es decir, un voto inteligente de parte de nuestra comunidad al respecto. And uh, so, it, what I want to say is that Latinos could be at a disadvantage. Uh, Uh, because they, they haven't been informed of the totality and complex purpose and ends and to be able to do a informed vote. Ya que de lo contrario, y una vez cumplida tal labor en la medida posible, se pudiera obtener de nuestras familias más comentarios en estos temas, porque existe confusión, temor fundado y posible zozobra ante estos temas en el presente y futuro por el litigio involucrado y las decisiones que pudieran desenlazarse como consecuencia de. Uh, and so the, in that way we could uh, do the labor. Um, uh, no, ver, por favor. Voy a repetir, voy a repetir, sí, ya, que, ya que de lo contrario uh -huh. y una vez cumplida tal labor en la medida posible, se pudieran obtener de nuestras familias 
más comentarios en estos temas porque existe confusión, temor fundado y posible zozobra ante estos temas en el presente y futuro por el litigio involucrado y las decisiones que pudieran desenlazarse como consecuencia de. Ok, because otherwise, uh, such measurements uh, could, could, uh, could take, because there is confusion, there is fear, there's a, a sense of overwhelming because of the lit litigation involved. El litigio involucrado, señor, y continúe. Disculpe, pero la frase está un poco larga. Voy, voy a repetirlo porque es importante esto. Mm -hmm. um, ya que de lo contrario y una vez cumplida tal labor en la medida posible, se pudieran obtener de nuestras familias más comentarios en estos temas. Pare, porque, por favor. Por porque favor. existe... Pare, pare, por favor. Hasta ahí nomás me llamo. <laughs> Because otherwise, uh, or, or on the contrary, we could uh, take measures for, uh, and, and obtain com commentary from our families. Okay, ahí continúe. En estos temas. About these things, about these issues. Porque existe confusión. Because there's confusion. Temor fundado. Founded uh, fears based. Y, y posible zozobra. And possible over, overwhelmed feeling. Eh, sosobra o ansiedad. Eh, Anxiety. Yeah. Posible sosobra ante estos temas en el presente y futuro. Before, the pres before these uh, issues uh, presently and in the future. Por el litigio involucrado. Due to the li li litigation involved. Por el litigio involucrado de José, right? For, sí. Yes, y because las of the litigation involved. Y las decisiones. And the decisions que pudieran desenlazarse that could uh, come, come forth or, come, or result from como consecuencia de as a, as a consequence of this. No es tarea fácil it's not an easy task pero sí es una importante labor but it is an important job an important labor el traer tal información y a tiempo bringing that information in on time que por derecho nos corresponde. Which we, which uh, through the rights uh, belongs to us, is, is our right to receive. Y sobre todo. And most of all. Al pedirse de nuestras opiniones respectivas. When, when asked for our respective opinions. Y, y me refiero en este caso por el, eh, el, el, el grupo progresista. And uh, what I'm referring to in this case is about the progressive group. Por lo tanto, so therefore, como representante ILAC, as an ILAC representative, y miembro de ILAC, and member of DILAC, propongo de la manera más atenta, I propose in the most uh, attentive way, que la mesa considere, that the uh, board considers, nuestra humilde sugerencia, our humble uh, suggestion, el de crear los espacios necesarios to create the necessary uh, spaces para brindarnos to give us y en nuestro idioma in our language español in Spanish con juntas, con más juntas with more uh, meetings de esta naturaleza of this type para seguir entendiendo to continue to understand con más amplitud uh, with more wideness and more amply este tema, this uh, issue, más bien político, more, more so uh, political, en mi opinión, in my opinion it's more political than anything else, pero repito, but I repeat, muy importante, very important, quiero aclarar, I want to uh, clear, make clear, make sure, que, que me interesa, that I'm interested in, y bastante, and very interested, que las, Islas no incorporadas de Napa. That the unincorporated uh, islands in Napa. Tengan la debida. Will have the due. Y merecida representación. And merited representation. Por último, le agradezco. Finally, I thank. Infinitamente. Infinitely. A Cindy. Cindy. A Joe. Joe. 
A la doctora Musetti. Dr. Musetti. Y a Robin. Robin. Por responder a mi correo electrónico. To, uh, for having answered my email. Muchas gracias a toda Thank la you. mesa. Very much for to the entire board. Por todo su, su trabajo. For all your work. Y toda su diligencia. And all your due diligence or your en, due diligence. En este tema. In this uh, issue. Y les agradezco mucho. And I uh, thank you very much. Que sean parte de nuestra comunidad. That you're a part of our community. Porque nos sentimos. Because we feel that. Que, eh, debidamente representados. We feel duly represented. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Thank you. Um, I want to um, thank everyone we for their patience. And I know that they are, our translation, we had to slow it down a little bit and self paced. Sorry about that. Um, do we have any other comments, Mr. Dries? Mr. Martin, we do. Uh, Scott Rafferty, uh, go ahead and speak. I will start the timer. Uh, good evening. Uh, I want to congratulate the board on, on uh, reaching this point. Uh, I think you have uh, an excellent map before you this evening um, uh, in, in map one that, that achieves uh, the goal of giving uh, American Canyon, its own trustee, and that <clears throat> uh, recognizes the uh, that the language uh, in which the the language group that has uh, English proficiency problems in American Canyon is uh, the Filipino community, and the Filipino community in our entire state appears to have uh, possibly only one school trustee. Uh, now they will have to obviously cross over and build coalitions because in map one, they only have 38%, uh, but uh, it's going to give them a voice and they deserve that voice. And American Canyon deserves that voice. So I, I hope that you uh, go in that direction. Uh, it's, uh, we had previously a 41%. Well, we had originally a 48% district for uh, uh, the Filipino community, and it was 41%, now it's 38%. But I don't think you can really uh, look at 35%, which is uh, uh, MAP2. MAP2 seems to be around the philosophy of making everything a, a microcosm, every district uh, having uh, everything spread around and, and mixed. And that's not really consistent with the Voting Rights Act. I do uh, want to reassure the last speaker that the islands uh, are, are well treated in this map. And uh, the Progressive Alliance has fought uh, very, very hard. Uh, and uh, to have them represented uh, in the city of Napa as well, where they are completely excluded. So I'm very proud of my client for that. Uh, and I think this uh, map, it's always uh, uh, good to see that uh, the incumbents all have an opportunity to run for re-election, which may not be the case in map two. Uh, map two, the high uh, Latino uh, trustee area, uh, which should run this year, uh, is uh, uh, in represented by a, a trustee that, that uh, is up for election in 2022. Uh, so I think it, it just, it seems to fit most of the requirements. Uh, you can't do everything on a map, uh, but it uh, uh, gives, I think, uh, uh, each part of the district uh, its own voice. And that's gonna be so important next year. Finally, I wanna mention the uh, concern about budget that the last speaker raised. When you move to district elections this uh, uh, November, your uh, bill from uh, the registrar is gonna fall by more than half. And uh, I don't know exactly how much money that is in another district I'm working in, it's, it's $125,000. Uh, that's going to be important going forward. Uh, it's going, but even more important than that is when you make all these tough choices, everyone will feel that they have a seat at the table. Uh, and it's going to be a very tough year for the uh, tough several years for for the school district. And this way, we can have increased 
confidence that we, everyone in the district has a spokesperson and they're going to elect a good negotiator. This system uh, has worked uh, for our country for, for 300 years. Uh, it's really uh, the way local government works uh, in, in most of the nation and most of the state. So I congratulate you on it. I think it's been uh, uh, a, a good product from, from an excellent demographer. And uh, I commend you for it. Uh, having having seen it through, I think we've gotten some really good analysis, and uh, uh, I uh, look forward to uh, uh, having this uh, uh, completed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rafferty. Uh, uh, Mr. Reese, do we still have Mr. Kitchenef? Yes, he doesn't have his hand raised, but um, we I do have we do have one more as well. Amy Mar Martin Martinson. Okay. Would you Would you like me to proceed with Amy? Yes, please. Okay. Go ahead, Miss Martinson. Hi. Good evening. Um, I didn't plan on making uh, a statement, so I don't have any prepared remarks tonight. But I do just want to comment about few, a few of the previous speakers. Um, the first one that was read, the email that was read from the American Canyon resident, um, she said she wanted map two because she wanted the possibility of having two representatives for American Canyon. And I think some of that confusion is coming from the bullet points under map two, where it says, um, as one of the highlights of the map, that there's the possibility of having two reps from American Canyon. What it doesn't say is that there's also the possibility of having no reps from American Canyon. Um, and so I think that that's, you know, obviously if you want two reps, you want to at least have one. Um, map one guarantees that American Canyon residents will have at least one rep and there's the possibility of two, but they would at least have one and that's not the case with map two. Um, also, I'm, I'm just curious in map two, there's a bullet point that notes that all of the districts touch Napa. In other words, all of the districts have a portion of Napa, and I'm wondering where that's coming from as a value and why that's a value. Um, one of the consequences of that, kind of along the lines of what I was just talking about, is that all of the reps could come from Napa. Um, so it seems to me that Map 2, the result of it, the effect of it, would be that it would maintain the status quo. It would um, maintain the dominance of Napa over the school district and that it would have the effect of not only diluting the vote of American Canyon residents, but of possibly eliminating uh, a rep and, and their voices. And I think their voices are very important. Um, another speaker mentioned that when they, they've heard from American Canyon residents that they quote, uh, what was the quote? They lack a unified knowledge of the district. Um, I think that it's important to have a diversity of voices um, and, and how all those voices come to the table and that's where you negotiate and you try to reach consensus and if you can't reach consensus in the end the majority rules but to try to create a map that will essentially uh, squash uh, alternative voices or diverse voices i think that's um that's not unity um so i strongly hope you will look at map one um i think it's the fair map and it's a map that will bring more voices to the table um, and I think that's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Martinson. President Martin, would you like to go back to Mr. Kishinev? Yes, please. Mr. Kishinev, go ahead. You need to unmute your mic, Mr. Kishinev. For some reason, Mr. Kishnev is not, not able to unmute his mic, it appears. I'm really sorry, Mr. Kishnev, but we I would try to you know circle back with you to get into the public hearing. Um, any other final um, um, public hearing comments? Mr. Reese? That, that can, oh, sorry. Mr. Justin Hall would like to speak. Justin, I'll, I'll, I'll allow you to speak. 
Go ahead, Justin. Um, I said, I did a great job on the map. Oh, uh, coming up. Thank you so much. I did a great Thank job. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Okay, I will now close, if there's no other comments, I will now close the public hearing. And um, trustees, you're open to discuss um, the final map one and final map two. Take an opportunity. So I really liked map D. Uh, I thought it did a good job of uh, dividing up the five northern areas and dividing up the two southern areas. Uh, finalist map one, uh, in my opinion, uh, area 1G does a very nice job of cleaning up what was a somewhat awkward looking area in uh, map D um, previously. But unfortunately, finalist map one uh, does not include the other northern areas that I liked from um, concept or draft map D. Uh, in fact, we don't have a map today that includes um, the totality of the idea from, from concept map D, which was the um, northern and southern areas. I, I really thought that that was pretty well nailed um, as far as uh, how things looked. I thought it did a decent job of uh, keeping the communities together. Um, and so I have concerns with both finalist one and finalist two. Um, I'm, I'm honestly leaning a little bit towards draft map D as, as a possible adoption tonight, rather than either of finalist one or two. Um, although I do have to say, I really like the one G area in, um, finalist one. And I do think that it's important um, to have a area that has uh, a fairly certain outcome in that it will include for sure one representative um, from American Canyon. Having said that, of the two presented, um, I do kind of lean towards two just because I think it does a better job in the northern areas. Um, so those are those are my thoughts uh, on the issue. Mr. Joe Shunk, would you like to comment? Uh, no, I don't have any comments at this time. Mr. Mitt Cindy Water? Sure, I've, I've got a few. Um, you know, I've gone back and forth between one and two. Um, I sent in, this is why consultants hate me. Um, I have, uh, I'd like to address some of the comments that were made um, about, well, one person thinks that by by having map two, it will somehow guarantee two people um, representing American Canyon. And there are no guarantees. Um, the only uh, map, except for map, except the other map one, the way uh, American Canyon, um, the way that little, the, the little circle, the hole is, uh, is drawn, that would, that would certainly do that. Um, there's been some loose talk about who lives in American Canyon. And one of my friends teaches um, English language development at American Canyon High School. And in her classroom, she, I remember talking to her and she had 12 languages in that classroom. So it's, this community is even more diverse than um, some people, than some people think. Um, as far as as far as, I mean, the idea of every single district, including a little bit of Napa, um, it's, it's an attractive idea and one that I was leaning towards, but um, 
But I was thinking that, you know, the nature of this job as Joe Shunk, the representative from American Canyon, has demonstrated over the years, precludes any sort of um, parochialism. You absolutely have to take an interest in all of the schools, in all the schools. I know that we say, okay, this school's in my district, but the reality is, is I live downtown a couple blocks from Shearer School, and I've been to American Canyon schools so many times. Um, in fact, the uh, pandemic kept me from um, going to a whole lot of concerts. And when a caller comes in, um, when a caller says that American Canyon has been very badly treated, well, you know where I worked at Napa High School. I would go to American Canyon High School and see the auditorium and practically burst into tears. Uh, it's a beautiful school. We've, um, we, we value American Canyon, and um, we've built some beautiful schools down there. Another one's going to be opening up next year. So um, I think that, I really think that, um, no, I, you know, I, I'd like to hear everybody on the board talk about this, because um, anyone who gets on our board and that's provided we can get people to run, because if you've listened to the uh, financial um, news that our finance person uh, gave us, it's, it's not an extraordinarily attractive proposition right now. And um, I, but I think, I just, I really believe that any map we have is going to have people who are addressing, are addressing the whole community. And that's all I have to say right now. I'd like to listen to the rest of you talk. Um, Mr. Jose Hurtado, do you have any comments? <clears throat> yes. Um, <clears throat> I would also like to address some of the comments made by, by our speakers. And I wanted to point out to Mr. Rafferty that, that when um, uh, Ms., Ms. Ortiz was speaking uh, about her concerns, her concerns were about uh, the... Um, the suddenness of this uh, move towards district uh, uh, elections. Uh, she was asking for more time so that the communities could become more engaged in the discussion of the drawings of the district. Uh, so, you know, I, I would hope that the, the Progressive People's Party would keep that in mind that, again, um, they, in an effort to uh, give people a voice in uh, the governance of their lives, they forgot to include the people whose voice uh, uh, they, they uh, claim to uh, uh, advocate for. Um, you know, I, I keep going back and forth about, about um, map uh, one and two, primarily because of the, uh, of the South County uh, proposition. I know that one of the philosophies around the um, Board of Supervisors uh, districts was that each of them would have a piece of Napa because then there would be at least one unifying uh, element in in their districts. Um, uh, I don't, uh, and if I could ask our demographers again for the percentages uh, of uh, of uh, residents in in area uh, two. Oh, I'm sorry. Two G and two F. Uh, the percentages of American Canyon voters in those two. Certainly, the population of American Canyon in two F is thirteen thousand two hundred ninety-two, which is sixty-eight point three percent of the city. And the population of American Canyon in 2G is 6,162, which is 31.7% of the city. Okay. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, campaigning that needs to, that goes along with, with running for office and actually winning the office. Um, the percentage of, of people um, in those areas doesn't doesn't guarantee that the election will go as as planned. Um, my 
my hope is that, um, you know, if map two is adopted, that an effort is made to uh, inform the communities of interest about the political process. I don't think we've done that very well. I don't think the Progressive People's Party has done that at all. And I'm not sure that, that you know, given the fact that this election will happen in November, that there, that there might be adequate time to help organize those communities in order to actually exercise their new, what, what I believe the Progressive Party believes is their new in, uh, um, franchise. Um, so uh, please, uh, please pay attention to the comments from the people who you, uh, you purport to speak for, um, because it, it's, 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 a little, it's a little unnerving to have those people you're supporting uh, actually speak out against your proposition. That's all. Robin Jankowitz, any comments? We are a quasi municipal corporation created for the sole purpose of performing one public function, and that is the administration of our public schools. As Trustee Water stated, we are responsible for advocating on behalf of all of our students, as we have done previously, as we do now, and as we will do going forward. Um, I mean, I think there are pros and cons on both maps. I had a conversation with someone well-versed in American Canyon who brought up some points that were not brought up this evening about what would lead to having to redistrict in the short term. If there was development in areas of growth, um, would they be evenly distributed on, on what map? Um, they look like they'd be more evenly distributed if under this certain economic climate there was to be growth at some time on map two. Um, so there are pros and cons. I, I wish we'd be so lucky that there were um, so many people that wanted to run for the school board. I, um, I wish for that, I hope for that. Um, but I do believe our responsibility, this has been somewhat, and with no disrespect to Mr. Rafferty, Ms. Martinson, this has been a little bit politicized in a manner um, almost implying that we do not represent our constituency in an equitable fashion. I think we do. So it becomes really pragmatic how we best represent everybody's voice and our responsibility is to do so whatever this map looks like. So I, my hat's off to uh, Trustee Water for stating that and, um, and that's, those are my comments. Ms. Gonzalez Mares. Um, I think every time we go over this topic in our hearings, it's, it just, again, continues to um, um, create that sense of um, just how unfortunate um, uh, this all is. Um, and hearing, um, you know, a representative of DLAC and ELAC um, really, um, continue to to voice to, to want the opportunity to say more um, and I think it wasn't really noted in her statement about civic engagement um, in the the desire to be civically engaged this is just one of the many ways to be civically engaged and I want to thank her for all her questions because those are always the right questions how are the decisions that we're gonna to make today going to impact our students? And as my fellow trustees have mentioned, we are here um, to provide um, all we can for all of our students and all of our districts. Nowhere in our decisions are we just focusing on, our, our board agenda is not designed by district. Our board agenda is designed as a whole on every aspect of it. Um, so for Ms. Norma Ortiz, and I don't, um, I'm hoping maybe I will follow up with her with an email because um, she, she had that question. She was urging us to, 
to take this slower and to slow down. And uh, unfortunately, the answer to this is that that option was not given to us. Um, because if we're talking about values, um, there was a tremendous disrespect to a community here. And so, um, and unfortunately, we can't, we can't do anything about that at this time. Um, but we'll have a chance to do this all over again next year. Um, and so that's something to um, look forward to. Um, that being said, um, with working with either MAP, um, I understand there's a lot of pros and cons. Um, I am leaning more towards um, MAP 2, I mean MAP 1, um, and I was a little bit um, just um, wanting to kind of understand more about MAP um, D, if that um, if the proposal for that is to take that into consideration, can we do that? Um, however, um, we decide, I think with, with me, the finalist, um, with MAP1, I actually like the distribution. I think there's a, we did a, you know, we, we kind of worked on this and did a good job of, in the last meeting, publicly worked on it. Um, in distributing where there's school, so every you know, so every district and every board member could have um, the schools in their area. You know, those are more fun when you're having to do some site visitations. But again, we take care of all of them. Um, but I do think that with Map One, it does um, guarantee um, to me, uh, you know, <laughs> either way. Um, an American Canyon voice, because that's the most important piece. Um, I think making sure that we do have the American Canyon voice at the table um, by having a member of the community there, which is the intention even of our current districts that we did have American Canyon. Joe's from American Canyon, so it was really great to have that that at the table. So it's not like we've never had it. it we've, we've had it. Um, it's been represented here. Um, so those are those are my thoughts right now. Um, is more leaning towards map one. Um, yeah, um, to sort of respond to some of the comments. Thank you. Thank you, um, Elba. Um, did anyone else need a comment before I before I start? Yeah, I I think I'm ready. Okay, Joe. <laughs> um. So people have articulated the pros and cons for finalist one, finalist two, and even uh, draft map D. Um, I've had a lot of time to consider um, the makeup of um, uh, the trustee areas. Uh, my experiences on the board, uh, my experiences observing the board before I was on the board. Um, I, I'm inclined to support finalists too, uh, in part because I have faith in American Canyon. Um, for the last 25 years, they have sent somebody to, to represent them. Um, finalist one doesn't really change that dynamic and doesn't address uh, the need that we have so often heard expressed where they would like to have somewhat more say. Um, that being said, whatever map is used, um, it is incumbent on people running. Uh, by changing our method of election, we are making it easier, less expensive to run, uh, which should uh, encourage people of more modest means to, to uh, step up and, and run. Um, but none of these maps will make any difference whatsoever unless we have contested races. And I'm sure there are plenty of people here tonight that will assert that um, uh, 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 the change in the method of election will facilitate that. 
At the same time, we're, uh, we're walking into the second economic buzzsaw in the last 10 years. So I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat, uh, uh, I, I don't know how readily I believe whether people will step up, uh, but if American Canyon wants uh, two representatives from town to represent them, uh, then they will have to step up and people will have to run. Um, you know, to address the speed with which we've had to do some of this, um, you know, I look forward to sort of going through the exercise to a degree in 18 months or so uh, to um, uh, see how, how the maps fit with more current data. Uh, as I understand it, we won't be getting any CBAP data for 2020 because the citizenship question wasn't asked. So I think the demographers would tell us we're still going to be mixing and matching the best data points we can from multiple sources. Um, American Canyon has had a increasingly substantial say over who seats, sits in the area four seat, which is uh, the, the seat I currently occupy uh, for the last 55 years. Um, finalist two gives them less than 100%, but a fair shot at two seats. Uh, and in the uh, west side, which is a slightly less dense, um, you would be hard pressed to take an election um, without considering the 30, almost 40% of people uh, from American Canyon that will be in the 2G area. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think the needs of American Canyon will need to be, uh, 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 can be addressed. Uh, and and I, I think if, if they, and they have articulated repeatedly at all of our public hearings, a desire to uh, pursue a, a two seat strategy, uh, then it's time we give them the chance uh, and I encourage them to to step up. Thank you. Okay. President Martin, can I make a comment? Yes, yes, you may. I just, um, this is more a logistical comment. Um, it was brought to our attention during public comment, unless I, it was a little difficult for me to hear. Um, so my apologies if I misinterpreted the public comment, but um, it is uh, within the right of our governance team if there is misinformation communicated via public comment, um, uh, it is okay for us to correct that information. I think it was stated that the school district had mysteriously removed the list of comments that were submitted vis-a-vis -vis email to the redistricting um, email that the, that the NVUSD established during this redistricting process. Um, those comments have been made visible and they continue to remain visible. I would direct anyone from the public that has interest in confirming that you can go to the redistricting page. Mm -hmm. There's a subtitle called draft and concept maps and under draft and concept maps, there's another subtitle called public comment. And there's a link that thanks the um, public for their input. Yeah. And the link directs people to see all emailed comments that were submitted through the draft map process, drafting of, of uh, the concept map process. I just wanted to make that clear on the record. It has not been removed. It is still there and has been there. Thank you, Dr. Massetti. Um, I think, thank you, board, for all your comments. Um, this is a... Um, this is a really hard decision. You guys are all talking about my area. <laughs> so um, I think it's, it's kind of like the comments that um, Mr. Shunk mentioned, that it gives an uh, equal opportunity in both maps for American Canyon to run. Um, I have to say that, you know, even though um, when I did my um, election, um, 
I was voted in with the majority of American Canyon voters. So I'm, I have been ever so grateful for that. Um, so it, I would, I'm going to continue uh, to still represent MVUSD, um, whether or not I would be re reelected. I'd love to see more people run for school board. Um, not saying that I do not like my job. It is a very, very tough job. Um, and I take that seriously and I take it with great pride. Um, so I think whichever map that we choose, whether it's one or two um, south of, of MVOSD, of, of both maps are um, would allow American Canyon. I know that there was a comment as to what was the purpose of having um, American Canyon touch. And I think it was a shared idea that we do not represent a city. We represent our students as a whole. Uh, we don't represent individual schools. We represent all of the schools. Um, so the reasons why, you know, some um, uh, 2G and 2F and, uh, you know, on the on map number one, two, um, the reasons why they were touching or leaking into Napa was that sense of community that you don't just belong in American Canyon where you divide it um, or you leave American Canyon kind of stranded and they're fighting their own fight for American Canyon. That was not the purpose. The purpose was we're in this together and not necessarily looking at this as a, oh, we want someone from Napa and an American Canyon to run. Um, no, because we're like our school says, it, we are a unified school district and we want to maintain it that way. Um, I think um, one of our other um, uh, speakers says, we kind of need to get out of the mindset that we are just a one city fighting our own fight or representing it. Um, and, and I think that the, this map, both of the maps gives us that, um, that we are unified somehow, some way. Um, so I'm, I'm really for both maps. I, it's been really like heavy on my mind which way I'm gonna go. And um, I'm, I'm split on map one and two, so I will, um, I'm still pretty much making up my mind, uh, not necessarily because um, there's something that's holding me back. It is, it's a great, um, it's a great decision because again, it's a kind of history in the making. We're gonna find ourselves doing this, you know, here shortly again. Um, there are uh, people that are very passionate about their position, so it's not it's not it's not an easy um, decision to make. Um, granted, all the all the hours that we've spent together, um, whether it's at CSBA or whether it's um, doing study sessions, um, I have to say, um, and before I do make my decision later on this evening, is that um, once you run for this position and it's a four year commitment. Um, I have to say that the learning curve has been really, really huge because every single year that I have served, and I'm sure other school board members can attest to this, there has been different curveballs sent our way. So we are learning new things that even when we thought, okay, we flatlined, okay, we're good. Now we're going to get to the, the, the nitty gritty of stuff and, you know, um, we end up finding ourselves on a, a, a different challenge coming our way, which, you know, like Eva Gonzalez Mares would say, bring it on. Um, it, it's been a really great experience. And I, um, I thank everyone for examining all these maps um, to our um, uh, demographers for their hard work. And um, I was really, really pleased with both maps. And um, uh, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and um, if we don't have any more discussion, I'm going to go ahead and um, and proceed with the with the agenda, if you guys don't mind. Do I have your approval to proceed? We will be revisiting this further down and then I'll give you explanation as to how um, the voting will go and if we introduce another map, how the voting would go introducing a new map as well. So those those instructions will to be continued, okay? All right. So does Miss Ortiz have her hand up again? She she does, um, but I, I she just put it down. Okay. And, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> there it goes. All right. So we are now on J1B. 
And this is introduction, or excuse me, I'm sorry, Alondra, did you have anything to say with regard to the public hearing? No, I do not. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, J1B, Introduction to California School Board Association, CSBA, recommended October and December 2019 policy updates. This is a discussion item. Do any trustees want to Do we have public comment on this? Do we have any public comment, Mr. Ruiz? We do not have any public comment on this item, President Martin. Okay. Trustees? Okay, seeing none, I move to J2, Business and Operations. We go into J2A, Stonebridge School Charter Petition Renewal Presentation. MBUSD staff will present its findings on the petition for renewal of Stonebridge School Charter for another five-year term prior to the board's vote on renewal. Mr. Ortiz, can we um, get the presentation up? I believe uh, Matt Manning is presenting. Matt? Is. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am presenting. Can you share your screen, Matt? Sure. Um, it says I cannot share while another participant is sharing. So someone else needs to stop sharing. Can, can you unshare your uh, screen, Tamina? I'm trying. It's not giving me an option. Let me try this way. So I'd like to um, introduce Matt Manning. Matt Manning is currently the principal of Phillips Elementary and um, effective July 1 will be our new director of elementary curriculum instruction and English learner services. Um, and he was tasked and um, given his professional expertise with charter schools in supporting the instructional services division with the review of the Stonebridge charter um, renewal petition. Um, and he'll be presenting tonight the instructional um, uh, divisions staff recommendations, um, along with some, we'll, we'll have some chiming in from Assistant Superintendent Rob Mingwala around some of the financial um, implications of the review. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Massetti, President Martin and trustees. Uh, Stonebridge Charter School submitted their petition for renewal of the charters of the school's charter in February. Uh, Maria Martinez, the lead petitioner, and members of the Stonebridge School community presented the charter to the Board of Education on March 12th. And I am here to present a summary of the review of the charter petition for tonight's board decision. Um, throughout the review process, I have consulted with the district's legal counsel to ensure that all aspects of the charter petition are legally compliant. Uh, only a few changes were suggested to the dispute resolution process and to the closing procedures. Um, I've, I've shared those few changes with um, Maria Martinez and she made those changes. Um, the changes to element three, I will discuss uh, with the academic achievement review in the next few slides. In addition to legal counsel, pertinent elements of the charter petition were reviewed by NBUSD staff from human resources, business services and the instructional division including special education and student support service, student services. No concerns were raised by the human resources or instructional team. And Mr. Manguala will share uh, his budget an analysis in just a moment. So um, one of the most important criteria for charter renewal is that the academic performance of for all groups of students served by the school should be at least equal to the academic performance of students in other district schools. For purposes of this renewal process, I have 
compared the fluent English proficient and English only population at Stonebridge and NDUSD because this is what represents the de predominant demographic of Stonebridge. Um, this is done to ensure that we are comparing similar populations of students as is called for in ed code. So we'll begin with the ELA comparison. And uh, what we see here is that uh, the, for the grade levels that were tested, Stonebridge students overall do meet or exceed the district proficiency rates. Um, fifth grade is below the district percentage, but Stonebridge is higher than the district percentage in grades six through eight. Um, I want to note that in the previous year, 2017-18, Stonebridge fifth grade proficien proficiency rate was and ELA was higher than the district rate at 80% proficiency. Uh, last year, Stonebridge did not administer the CASP assessment in grades three and four, but the charter petition now reflects a commitment to administer the online CASP assessment in grades three through eight, beginning in the 2021 school year. And this references back to one of the recommendations made by legal counsel in element three of the charter. So the results are similar in math with Stonebridge as a whole, meeting or exceeding the district proficiency per percentage. Here again, the results are lower than the district percentage in fifth grade, uh, but higher in sixth through eighth grade. Questions focused on the, the racial and ethnic balance uh, of Stonebridge have surfaced as part of this petition as well as previous renewals. So I wanted to address this specifically as part of this presentation. Uh, the charter petition acknowledges that the school's demographics do not reflect Napa's general population. Uh, element seven and appendix L of the charter include a commitment by the Stonebridge Charter Council staff, principal to increasing diversity of the school and a plan for accomplishing this. Some of the steps that they've outlined are employing bilingual office staff, uh, targeted bilingual recruit recruitment, and ensuring that this topic is a running agenda item at all Charter Council meetings going forward. Uh, Ms. Martinez and the Charter Council also plan to leverage the move to the Second Avenue location with its more central location in the hopes that they'll be able to re recruit more uh, Latino students. So I'm going to um, move to the next slide and let Mr. Mangualip present his budget analysis. Good evening, thank you for the opportunity to uh, share my budget analysis. So for my budget analysis, I'm gonna break it into several areas, area of strength, negative impact of COVID, some areas of concern, uh, and, and then some next steps and recommendations. So in terms of areas of strength, Stonebridge has a significant reserve. According to the audit statement provided by Siobhan and Associates, their cash or equivalent as of 6-30-2019 was $1.1 million. This is in excess of their board required reserve of 20%. Stonebridge is also an independent charter. They have the ability to keep wages lower than, than market demand in traditional K-12 school, schools. Um, they also have the ability to reduce the cost of their employee health contribution, which actually sits uh, higher than the school district contribution currently. Um, they, there will be an, a negative impact on COVID-19 on their budget. So again, absent uh, an economic miracle, COVID-19 will negatively impact the budget for California for, for years to come. This will also include funding for charter schools. Um, just like what occurred during the Great Recession, uh, um, enrollment will also be impacted uh, at the charter. So some of my areas of concern um, outside of COVID-19 is, is that their initial budget showed uh, an increase in LCFF funding. Uh, after my presentation from earlier tonight, we do know that th that, that is not realistic and their overall budget will need to be adjusted uh, just like our budget will. Uh, including a COLA again is not realistic anymore. Uh, Napa Valley is having a, house, a housing shortage, which is contributing to, to declining enrollment. Um, this decline in enrollment will also impact charter schools. Um, the, consumer, <clears throat> the consumer price index or adjustment uh, was not applied to books and, some, and other materials. And so in terms of some adjustments to their multi-year projection, I would like to see some, some assumed cost increases 
especially related to special education. Um, probably the biggest thing in terms of concern is there is significant deficit spending in all years, which will need to be addressed. Probably the most important thing that they have going forward for them besides addressing the deficit spending is adoption uh, of industry standard software, such as Projection Pro to complete their, their multi-year projection. I did work closely with the, the, the principal to uh, input their, their projection into Projection Pro. Uh, I've agreed to help them with that going forward so that we can model different scenarios. So in terms of recommendations for next steps, again, we, we should uh, continue to use software like Projection Pro where we can model the different impacts on, on the budget. Um, <clears throat> They should adopt uh, a budget that uses industry standard assumptions, like a release, like a release by school services. Um, the other concern that I have is they do have some significant donations, and so I don't know if it's realistic to uh, assume that these uh, these donations will continue. This concludes my analysis. Thank you. So, uh, with that based on the charter review and after working through the interactive process with um, Ms. Martinez and her team, staff do recommend renewal of the, of the Stonebridge charter with the changes to the petition. Thank you, that concludes my report. Thank you. Do we have any um, comments, um, Board of Trustees? I do. Go ahead, Ms. Water. Okay, thank you. Um, hello, Matt, good evening. Um, I'm really sorry that because of uh, COVID-19, I couldn't tour the school. Um, I have been there before, and uh, I, am aware, I am familiar with um, Waldorf education. I've been to visited several schools, and one of my good friends sends her children to the one in Sonoma. And um, I taught many graduates from Stonebridge when I worked at Napa High School. They were good students. Um, I've also been in the room um, on all the occasions, but never as a trustee, this is the first time, when uh, the charter was up for renewal and I heard the same concerns all the time. In fact, just to make sure I was getting it right, I went back and looked at the tapes for 2010 and 2015. And the big concern is always that there is no cultural diversity in the school. And there are always these promises that we're going to do better and it's the same and it's the same year after year and so you know i'm really not anticipating much of a change there um there is something that isn't in your report that has always fascinated me uh stonebridge about seven years ago figured in the san francisco chronicle as the school with the lowest vaccination rate in the bay area and while it's gone up a bit according um According to the to um, state records, uh, you have a 69% vaccination rate, which is you know quite low, and is um, anything below 80%, you know, generally causes eyebrows to raise. And I, I've just always been, I've always wondered how that how that came to be. Um, I don't think people at the school encourage it, but I'm I just find it fascinating. And these days. It's a little bit alarming. Um, and uh, another question is, I'm not surprised the, uh, the test scores are good, given your um, SES, socioeconomic um, stratum. But the other thing I noticed is you have uh, about one third of your students opting out of the testing, which is, um, again, a very high percentage of opt-outs. And, you know, and I was just wondering how that, how that came to be. Um, and another question I have is what are the teacher prepared materials? There wasn't anything, you know, specific there. And that's, those are, those are my comments. President Martin, if you're okay, we do have okay. Principal um, Maria Martinez and Matt Manning available to answer questions. So um, if they want to unmute themselves to reply, that's fine too. Okay. That's thank fine. you very, thank you very much, Trustees. Do you want me to go ahead and start with those questions from uh, Trustee Waters? Sure. 
Okay, so um, the vaccination rate, that's the one that of course um, I, I wrote down first. So um, I think what happens is parents that choose an alternative form of education are alternative thinkers just in general. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we have, Walter Schools and Stonebridge has had a history of having um, some high rates of um, vaccination opt out, uh, personal uh, request. So we have been uh, trying to fix that. It, you, it, parents still have the ability to opt out, but of course we know that that ability is getting narrower and narrower. So we do follow all the laws, all the state laws and vaccinations. And I think it's just gonna have to run its course. Um, uh, the numbers are getting higher and are better, but um, I think it's, it's something that it, it's, kind of hard to educate the parents. We just need to tell them what the law is and then um, monitor to make sure that they adhere. So I think that's what I would answer to the vaccination. The, um, the diversity, um, you're right. This is something that we have been uh, trying to have, make a difference and strive for a very long time. And I think it's going to continue to be something that it's gonna be one of our greatest challenges. And every time we do come in front of you, this is the first time I've come for a charter renewal, but every time we do, we always talk about the, you know, the striving and the commitment. So I can give you my commitment that I will um, do what I can and to see what we can do to make it better. I do think that moving to Carneros was a little bit of a, um, uh, was a little bit of a hardship because we, they're the distance for, to this campus from town, but the hope is that the move to the new site will make a difference for that. Teacher preparedness, are you talking about like textbooks and that kind of right. thing? Right, yeah, they, there was just a list of um, teacher prepared material. The instructional material, Cindy, what the instructional what? material, instructional material. Right, instructional right. materials, and they were prepared by teachers. Right, so we don't use textbooks in, in our classrooms. And so our teachers do a summer training. They will, um, sometimes they'll do like a, a writer's workshop from Berkeley. Other times they'll take a class called the Art of Teaching. So a lot of their materials are um, self-researched uh, materials that they'll get from um, these trainings. So we don't have uh, textbooks traditionally, but um, the teachers do a lot of self-research and will um, access the material that way, that, that helps. Um, and the other one was testing and our rates of testing. So we are a low or no tech school. So we really feel that technology is something that we introduce to the children as they're uh, later on. So our mm -hmm. philosophy has been not to test, not to put the kids on online tests. We did do the CASP test up until the time that the paper pencil ran out. Right. And so, um, and our parents are very aware that they don't want their children on technology either. Mm -hmm. So we do not encourage people to opt out, um, but it is part of our philosophy. And we do understand that the way things are moving, that online testing will be something that we'll have to do. So does that those answer your questions? No, that answers my question. Thank you very much. Great, thanks, sorry. Why are we color? Any other comments? Okay, I thank you so much. Yes. Oh, Mr. Shine. So, sorry. I assume you want the discussion here as opposed to the action item. It, that's a question to you, President Martin. Um, I prefer you discuss and then we just take the vote later. Okay. Then I will put forth my comments. They're somewhat extensive, so it'll take me a few minutes. Um, like some of the others, uh, I had a chance to review the uh, Stonebridge and NBUSD minutes for the last 15 years and the uh, renewals of 2010 and 2015 on video. I am clear that both the district staff and the petitioner would like me to vote for a renewal for any number of reasons. I acknowledge the work that district staff, legal counsel, and the petitioner have done during the review period these last two months. I am, however, struggling to agree. Are the changes, assertions, and intentions sufficient to alleviate my reservations? Will the follow through actually happen, or will we be here again in five years debating the same thing? Before delving into my comments further, I would like to correct an initial Stonebridge uh, statement that was made when the topic was introduced 
seemingly a long time ago, but it was probably closer to two months. Um, I would fundamentally like to address a misunderstanding of the board's support and specifically the most past renewal of 2015. The board's support is not as unalloyed as was made out that evening. Any support for the last three uh, renewals has really been more nuanced, tempered, and ambivalent than you seem to think. I understand how that confusion comes about. On the one hand, uh, you can claim 80% of the board voted to approve the 2015 petition. On the other hand, you got the bare minimum passing vote of four eyes, one no, and two absent. Both statements are true, and truth be told, I hesitated. Trustee Felder's concerns that night have played out. The context for my decision, and I have specifically not dwelled on COVID-19 implications for either learning or finances, due to the timing of this renewal, I just don't think anyone has a firm grasp on what assumptions to make, nor is there a consensus on what the future looks like, let alone how to respond to it. The role and limits of authorizer have been stacked in your favor any charter school's favor, it's not just you. We are limited, some would say hamstrung, in the considerations we can take into account. There are good and bad pub public policy reasons for this. AB 1505 and AB 1507 are not yet operative, that comes after July 1st, so the consideration is under similar parameters as 2015, which is to say we are primarily restricted to considerations of academic progress and finance, along with a, fa a fairly simple rubric for the completeness of the petition. The academic review must meet at least one of the following. For all groups of pupils served by the charter school is at least equal to or uh, uh, as, as well as the academic performance of the schools in the sc school district, taking into account the composition of the pu pupil population that is served by the charter school, or shows increases in pupil academic achievement uh, for all groups of pupils school-wide and among numerically significant pupil subgroups as defined by Ed Code 52052, subsection A, which includes ethnic subgroups, socioeconomically disadvantaged students with disabilities, foster youth, and homeless youth. Stonebridge effectively has little or no measurable accountable subgroups. I find it challenging to evaluate academic progress at Stonebridge and I am challenged to accept staff's evaluation. The challenge to find comparators to place Stonebridge next to as part of a transparent evaluation is complicated by both the grade span K-8 versus uh, K-5 and 6-8, uh, and finding comparable schools with similar student body makeup. I don't believe comparing Stonebridge to NBUSD as a whole is a meaningful comparison, whether or not it is limited to fluent English proficient and English only. Focusing solely on language proficiency doesn't do justice to all the other diverse aspects of the student body we serve. For example, in 1819, Stonebridge's students with disabilities was 3.3, percent versus the district average of 12.5 percent. Because so few kids are involved, 10 kids change the percentages significantly from one year to the next. Socioeconomically disadvantaged, depending on the year, is anywhere from 4.8 to 10.3 percent versus a district average of 51.2 percent. When drilling down on the dashboard, uh, to the minimalist subgroups such as they are, we discover the Latino group scores 67% meet and exceed for ELA, 
but only 8% of that same group meet and exceed for math. So, you know, we've talked about for three renewals, the uh, diversity issue. And, you know, I, I, I'm channeling my inner Rob Felder at this point. You know, I'm profoundly bothered by the lack of progress towards even a pale reflection of the surrounding community in 15 years, even after repeated prompting by the board. I'm not a social justice warrior that some would wish me to be. I can see the humor in a bumper sticker. Being politically correct means always having to say you're sorry. I can also see and appreciate the concerns that drive the push for changes in societal norms. The academic performance of Stonebridge students compared to comparable district-run schools yields, yields a pretty limited pool due to the skewed demographics. The only demographically comparable schools that I could find are Mount George and Vichy with a white subgroup of greater than 70% and a Latino group of under 17%. The failure to have a school population that reflects the broader community is reflected in the lack of subgroup targets that have to be hit. Stonebridge simply has fewer targets to hit. It lowers the bar to be considered high performing. As the authorizer for a charter school from the last renewal forward, the legislature tells us that the academic performance is the most important factor in renewing. The problem is we have to consider increases in pupil academic achievement for all groups served by the charter school. What if the charter school doesn't serve all? I grant that they have no measurable subgroup problems, but it's due to the neg negligible subgroup populations. The dashboard won't produce results for groups of less than 10 students, which means Stonebridge has no stu data for students with disabilities, socioeconomically disadvantaged, English learners, African-American, Asian. Academic progress is more nuanced and ambivalent when compared to schools of comparable demographics. In ELA, Stonebridge scored below demographically comparable schools in fifth grade, the only overlapping grade for which the CASP was administered in 1819, but fourth and fifth grade scored above demographically comparable schools in 1718. And the upper grades sixth through eighth generally do better than the district, but only if you consider language acquisition as your sole measure of diversity. Math. Stonebridge scored up to 10 to 25 points lower than demographically similar schools in the overlapping fifth grade in 1819, significantly lower in most grades in 1718. The claim is undoubtedly that Waldorf Method's uh, developmental model differs from California's expectations. That may be, but it doesn't make evaluating the program any less challenging. I'm tired of throwing up my hands and saying Waldorf is going to do what Waldorf is going to do. None of this is new. Under previous accountability regimes, Stonebridge would nominally be a decile seven or eight, but a decile two on similar schools comparisons. My concerns about the uneven playing field regarding the substitution of the Iowa's assessment for the CASP have been addressed in the final petition. However, I despair at trying to provide oversight at the likely opt-out, encouraged or not, by Stonebridge in CASP testing. In five years, we could again be talking about a lack of data upon which to make a transparent determination on academics. The best I can say is that even if we can't do anything about it, we will be watching. In May of 2014, it was stated that the majority of parents third through fifth grade opted out of the SBAC field test. 
rather than give you all the legal sites about the ins and outs of parental opt out, Stonebridge can, uh, uh, school itself cannot solicit opt out, uh, but uh, 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 parents can uh, opt their children out. For, and as already been noted, but I wanna get it into the record, uh, for 2019, Stonebridge only tested 68% uh, of the students, driven primarily by a 69% participation rate of 75% of their testable students in the white subgroup. I would note that 85% of the students with disabilities chose to be tested. Now, the dashboard data tracks the testing participation rate. And if you read the fine print on the CDE website, the federal Every Student Succeeds Act requires districts and schools to test at least 95% of all students and student groups in English language arts and math. It also requires states to factor the participation rate into the academic indicator. If a district, school, or student group does not meet the 95% participation rate target, the distance from standard value for the academic indicator is adjusted downward. So there will in fact be a consequence to the choices that are made. Diversity more broadly. Demographics have changed very little. The petition acknowledges and clearly articulates the challenges of changing that. However, a deeper look at the DataQuest data at CDE yields less change than one might think. From 2014-15 to 2018-19, while the white population dropped from 83.1% to 76.6%, or about 15 students, the Latino population only rose from 98 to 10.4% or two students. Aside from some very minor movement in other categories, the rest of the shift went to multiple and not reported. So it is difficult to ascertain whether there was any real movement. But as trustee Rob Felder observed in 2015, as the district becomes increasingly diverse, more heavily Latino and socioeconomically disadvantaged, the de minimis progress that SBS makes actually becomes a larger disparity. In reviewing prior renewals based on comments that trustee Francis Ortiz Chavez made, uh, she made the observation that the board discussion with Stonebridge over the systemic lack of a population even vaguely approximating the district had been going on since 2003. Now to the, uh, the, the rub that I have with uh, some of staff's recommendations. According to legal counsel, this is not a rationale for denial of a petition as long as Stonebridge demonstrates a good faith effort to address this. The petitioner has addressed this in the charter petition and is committed to making this a topic uh, a standing agenda item at the Charter Council meetings, keeping it top of mind for Stonebridge. The rhetorical question is, what constitutes a good faith effort after 15 years? I don't find the assertion that a change in location will uh, facilitate access to a more diverse population of students. For better or worse, Stonebridge has been in a few locations over the years and the melody is the same. Finances. The budget originally presented had a number of not minor flaws, many of which have been remedied by the submission of 28 April. The interrelated line items in the original budget have been reflected, uh, updated to reflect their relationships. The current submission for our consideration has the thinnest of additions to fund balances predicated on a salary freeze for the three year forecast period, 
a decrease in employer portion of health benefits with a corresponding increase on the employee side. AB 1505 increases credentialing requirements for teachers, yet SBS does not provide financial assistance for credentialing. The parent council uh, helps teachers further their education. The good news is many Waldorf trainings, like pretty much everything we're doing these days, have gone online, eliminating travel and housing. The net income comes to less than 1% to 3% of total revenue. There's a static set provision for special ed encroachment, whether or not they stay in the Napa Selma. I find the explanations regarding some of the remaining light items less plausible due to this year's circumstances. I have trouble disputing the assertions that the relatively minor line items uh, reflect uh, uh, don't reflect uh, Stonebridge's past experiences. I would just add the same disclosure they put on mutual fund documents, which is past performance is no guarantee of future results. I find the assertions that you have overestimated this, underestimated that, and therefore these represent conservative estimates less than rigorous in light of the razor's edge the budget rests on. Uh, others have test on, uh, mentioned the vaccination rate. I'm looking at it solely as a financial risk. Um, and, you know, it's not my intention to go down the vaccination debate rabbit hole, but it's the potential impact to your finances. Um, let's see. It'll be up to the California Department of Health to create a means to electronically submit the medical exemption certifications uh, to the California Immunization Registry um, by January 1st, 2021, which is only seven months from now. So in some way, part of this will resolve itself without uh, us being in too heavily involved. Stonebridge collectively accepts and shoulders the institutional risks related to individual choices that parents make. In conclusion, I would ask that staff include the final complete petition in tonight's agenda items for future reference. And with some frequency, I refer back to the public record five or 10 or 10 or more years ago. Uh, I would admonish Stonebridge, if it doesn't stay on top of their finances, they will slide into demonstrably unlikely to successfully implement the program set forth in the petition, and they will find themselves on the receiving, receiving end of a notice of violation for MAP. The board should consider the extent ever mindful of staff's workload to make use of board policy 420.41 charter school oversight specifically considering charters shall provide regular reports to the board related to their charter provisions and the superintendent or designee shall regularly report to the board on the charter school's performance based on academic and fiscal accountability measures I would envision these reports to include not only the successes, but progress on the points of friction between us. I cannot deny the position for the chronic systemic diversity issue according to legal advice. I considered voting I abstain so that while I can find no defensible basis to deny, there would be no mistaking my enthusiasm. Board bylaws, however, assert that when no conflict of interest requires abstention, its members have a duty to vote on the issues before them. In other words, our job is to choose whether we like the choices or not. And so with more than a little reluctance and chagrin, I will vote to renew the charter. Sela, may I make a couple of very brief comments? Yes, you may. Um, I 
at the risk of being repetitive, I have crafted comments previously, so there will be a little bit of overlap, I apologize. I too watched past board meetings, uh, reread the Charter School Act, and reviewed all the legisl legislative posturing that has occurred. Um, I too have, after reading sections of the Charter Review, have some issues that have caused concern. Academic achievement, pupil outcomes, I don't think using NBUSD is an appropriate benchmark for academic achievement. SBS is not a reflection of our schools. Napa Valley Unified achievement numbers are predicated on a broader range of learners. So I believe that Stonebridge, their numbers are artificially inflated. They should be compared, as Ms. Trustee Shunk said, to a school, schools of similar size and composition in order to compare academic performance with that of NBUSD. Um, in the executive summary, and I, I won't restate, it's EC section 47607 about implying that comps be more specific to an individual school than NBUSD as a whole. Diversity. Diversity has been an issue, Joe stated, since 2003 in the initial, um, uh, before the initial renewal request. And I do not believe it is the location of the school that drives the lack of diversity. It is the specificity and the methodology of the curriculum. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it, but I do believe that is the driving factor. Additionally, the sibling policy also contributes to the continuing lack of ethnic balance. Um, much of the financial stability, as it has been forecasted, is based on, a, on stable assumptions and not a reflection of the current economic climate. While this was an accepted practice of financial forecasting during a strong economy, this is a budget now fraught with inherent risk. Some of the issues Rob did bring up, COLA, continued increases are reflected in LCFF funding through 2022-23, yet no modifications were made for funding uncertainties. With the issue of technology, distance learning in the fall, or potentially a hybrid of such, how do you plan to navigate that with minimal expenditures on books and a computer line item of $2,000? I'm assuming that's for educators. Local and other revenue is predicated on philanthropic donations with the exception of interest income. Very hard to assess impact and not meaningly, <clears throat> excuse me, reflected in the projections. So those would be my observations and concerns. I would like to address, if I may, I am, you know, really concerned in light of the um, information that was released today uh, about your finances. You know, you have a financial outlook here that um, is prior to any COVID-related issues, as Joe mentioned, balanced on a knife edge. It's barely eking out uh, enough dollars to to stay solvent. And I have grave concerns about your donation and grants. I believe that in the current situation we find ourselves in, that donations are likely to dry up. Uh, people are going to be looking out for their families first and not uh, contributing nearly as much as they have been in the past. And if we assume the approximately 10% reduction instead of the increase that you've sort of included here, then in every single year, you will be deficit spending to a significant amount. Uh, and so, I am concerned that there's not a realistic pathway here for you to sustain your school over the coming years based on the data that I see before me today. Um, and fiscal oversight is the biggest reason to um, consider denial of this petition. Um, and I'm gravely concerned that you're not going to be able to manage to meet your fiscal responsibilities um, moving forward. What type of plans do you have to shore up your budget so that you don't go bankrupt? You need to unmute Maria. You yeah, want to I was going to say, do you want me? Do you want me to address that that pretty direct question about budget? Yes, please. 
Okay, so um, we have lived um, definitely um, within our means. We have a 39% reserve. And we knew that it was coming, that a recession was coming. CCSA and other organizations that are advocates for charter schools have been um, sounding the horn about um, that the future looks unstable. So we've made it a point to make sure that we had a solid footing for recession. So in looking forward, when we did that, that budget, we did put the COLA in there because that was what the June uh, prediction was. So now that we have the May revise, we know that we're gonna have to cut by 10% or 7.7%. So we are ready to make those cuts. Um, we will definitely be deficit spending for the next couple of years, but um, I want to do it consciously and conservatively. So um, the plan would be to cut down the budget by at least eight percent, and then to add back back some things that we um, that we feel like make our program or support our employees. So that chances are we will be deficit spending, but I'm not um, worried that we won't be able to ride the storm, and that by the end. Of of hopefully what maybe three or four years down the road we'll still have a solid reserve and um, when things pick up then we'll be able to increase expenses so that would be my response to um, the fiscal piece um, the other pieces I think I talked a little bit about diversity I'm not sure what other um, comments um, trustee shrunk would um, want me to address I um, I understand a lot of what you're saying and that uh, that, that the testing can look like it's um, not representative of the district. Um, we've looked at ideas about doing things like taking care, taking out the sibling preference and other ways to build our, um, our diversity and maybe it's time to re look at doing some of those things as well again. So does that answer? I don't know what other questions um, I haven't addressed. The trustee, does that, does that answer the question about budget for, for you? The direct, that direct question? It sounds to me like you still intend to be deficit spending and you're just sort of hoping that things will get better before uh, you run out of reserve money. Mm, um, I can see that the answer could sound that way, but I think that, um, like I said, we knew, everyone knew the recession was coming. And so we knew that we put extra money away in case we did have to do some deficit spending, but not to the point where we would put the school in jeopardy. So, any other comments, trustees? Okay, um, I just had one, um, uh, something that Joe said, I'm not gonna repeat any anything that was already mentioned um, with, you know, um, talking about the socio socioeconomically disadvantaged and, you know, sped kids. I think jo uh, Joe did a great job uh, speaking of that um, and how um, our trustees have been looking at this since 2003. Um, but I, I, my suggestion would be is that of Joe would be the charter oversight and provisions of you coming continuously so we could see the measures and probably the processes and the provisions that your school is doing in order to um, fulfill this need. Because after renewing for five years, I mean, we do, we only see a limited amount of information. And I think if we seen the process of you doing it, then we'd have a better understanding of, of what that even looks like throughout the years. Um, because it, it, is a char, uh, it is a hard pill to swallow, um, seeing that we're looking at a, there's a quinceanera, that's 15 years of someone's life um, of, of not having the um, the students that kind of reflect in view in VSD. Um, and now that you're saying, well, maybe that we if we move, you know, I thought about that too. But then when we're looking at Mount George numbers, I really don't know that that would even that that even benefits at this at this moment um, if we look at Mount George numbers and and how diverse they were. So I'm not I'm not sure that that was um, uh, a selling point for me. Uh, but again, I would encourage, you know, the, uh, the charter oversight. And I don't know, Rosanna, what we would have to do in order for that. Do we do a future agenda item or how do you move that, or how we move that forward? 
Yeah, that's fine. Um, I hear the request. Um, I hear um, the ask for increased accountability, um, you know, um, from various trustees. And so, yes, I can work closely with Maria, have the staff from the Instructional Services Division work closely with Maria, and we can think of ways to bring um, ongoing updates around the uh, financial and academic accountability measures. Trustees, any other comments? Go ahead, one more, wouldn't one way for us to um, sort of uh, be aware of what's going on in that direction be through the uh, through their council minutes? I mean, do you ever talk about this at your um, at your charter with you know with the, the your charter board? Because you know, frankly, I've read the minute. I read the minutes from you know we had. Uh, three charter schools and they would also submit minutes uh, to us and stone bridges were the most vague. Um, I, I, I couldn't tell what you even talked about um, when reading the minutes. I recognized a few names there, people I know, but that was about it. And uh, perhaps if your minutes were a little bit more definite, uh, it would be, you know, we would, we would have some confidence okay. that there was at least an attempt to uh, address this issue. The issue of diversity, which, you know, I, I mean, I was laughing while I was listening to the tapes, but, um, and as I said, I was in the room. I've, Joe Shunk and I met as attendees at school board meetings. And, um, you know, just, it's just something that just kept coming back. It was like Groundhog Day. And we, yeah, we will definitely make it a point to make sure that the minutes reflect uh, okay. more conversation. Okay. And over the course of, um, the last couple of years working closely with Maria, you know, I have attended some of their charter meetings as, as has other staff. And so that's another mechanism where we can, you know, invite some of our instructional support staff to attend their charter council meetings for sure. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. Okay. Um, moving on, uh, is there any other comments? We'll move on, we'll proceed with the agenda. J3A, Introduction of Revised Board Policy, Administrative Regulation 5141.52 and Exhibit 5141.52. Did I get that right? Suicide Prevention, excuse me. And this is a discussion item. The policy is being brought forth tonight. Um, that was item, I think it was J, the previous one. Um, which we've moved past now, which is J1B, but um, this one, J3A and J4A are all first reads on um, policies that need to get um, revised and or updated. Um, the suicide prevention one is one of those um, that has to do with the federal program monitoring as well. So I, go ahead, Joe. The, the only thing I note is these did not go through the policy committee because of timing. We needed to get them in front of the board so we could act on them um, uh, 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 because of both the, the, the federal program monitoring uh, and recent decisions where we need to get the policies in place quickly. My only comment would be that, you know, after reading this, this obviously speaks to the ongoing importance of mental health. Social emotional uh, curriculum seems to fall under the health classes, which are loosely held in PE. And I would just hope at a further, at a future board meeting, we could be updated um, on the status of our health classes and any timeline revisions that are applicable. Yes, Trustee Jankwitz, um, Assistant Superintendent Pat Andrew Jennings will be um, uh, bringing forth that presentation at an upcoming board meeting. One of the one of the last three that we have left. Great, thank you. So I just wanted to say I applaud the focus on um, enhancing our suicide prevention. I know in my short time on the board, we've had to deal with several students who have decided to take their own lives, and that's always very tragic and so um, I, I like that we're shining a spotlight on this and you know making our best efforts in this area. I'll just add that um, I think the policy is 
you know, we have that it's ed code and all that. Um, but now it's just with everything moving with virtual education, it's not in that, we're not in the space with kids. The classroom setting has changed completely. Um, I was in a meeting from a report um, from the, the Napa, specifically the Napa chief of police, uh, mentioning that the number of phone calls um, have gone down from um, children uh, from reporting child abuse um, and so it's because we, we don't see the kids in the classrooms and that's not to say we're not keeping an eye on that, but I'm just saying that the, the things have changed. Um, we no longer see the kids in our classrooms like we used to. And that was, that was one of the most critical, important things of, of our kids is that the schools were a place, um, that provided safety. And so to hear that from the chief of police that the number of of, and that, you know, I'm not, that's other data and statistics that show the correlation between suicide and, and children being abused or mistreated um, or coming from families with a lot of domestic violence or so, those, those tend to increase the possibility of, of our children being more vulnerable. Um, so I just wanted to share that, that um, it, it's more the implementation piece that I am more concerned because you can have a beautiful policy, but it's the implementation piece. And I know it's a, it's a challenge for us because the children are no longer in the classroom. The teachers don't, can't see them every day, you know, can't see how they're doing physically even, um, and are they participating or not in, in a different way. So it's, it's that human contact is, is missing here and that I struggle a lot with that. And we know that our students need so much social um, and emotional support. Um, but I, I also know that we have a great team that's really looking into that. But I wanted to share um, something that was shared with me in a meeting and um, I thought that was concerning. Any other comments? Just one, um, it, over time, you know, I've, uh, Joe and I have read and reviewed and, and, and approved, you know, a lot of policies that really rightfully belong in a binder in the superintendent's office. Um, hopefully never to see the light of day again. Um, this one or, or other policies like this uh, can't. And it, it's, these are the policies that need to be understood throughout the district. Uh, there needs to be some you know, training, but an acceptance that that we have uh, our you know our teachers um, and everyone who has close contact with our students have a higher responsibility than 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 most of of of, of the community in recognizing and helping to address the, the problem. Um, so uh, I too agree that that I'm glad that we we are putting the spotlight on this. I agree with um, Ms. Gonzalez Maris that that this is you know that that these policies need to be um, discussed and 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 you know move forward. Thank you. Thank you, um, trustees. Um, I think this is perfect. Um, I, that we are putting this board policy together. I didn't, in my opening comments, I was a little nervous so about giving my graduation speech, but um, I wasn't able to announce that um, due to uh, Jenny Olson um, introducing me to the Napa County Suicide Prevention Council, I am on their council right before going into closed session. Um, I was on their uh, council meeting um, and it was really like the resources and ways to engage the community and getting those numbers. Um, I want to say that there is someone on there from MVUSD. I couldn't quite see everything in, in less than like 45 minutes. I was, you know, kind of trying to absorb everything, especially being in, in a new group. Um, so I do pertain to Napa County Suicide Prevention Council. And I, um, um, some, some of the opening comments uh, were, you know, what are you grateful for? Um, I think 
I said I was grateful for the group, but then I, it's also we're shortcoming because the numbers um, are up because of um, COVID-19 and, and, and it's not just affecting our, um, our students, it's affecting our teachers and it's affecting our families um, and, on, and also our employees. So how do we, like Elba kind of says, like how do we account for those numbers? We don't see the kids, we don't see the teachers, we don't see these families, you know, what is going on? So I'm getting a hold on something we can't see, touch or feel, it, it's gonna be a challenge, but uh, more so I think this gives a little bit more meaning to my life purpose of of trying to put a hold on it at least on a you know really more focused lens here in our county so i'm glad to serve on this council and and thank you again for putting this uh, before us today okay um and i will move on this was a discussion item um, J4, the operation services, J4A, introduction, introduction of revised administrative regulation 3311.3, design build contract, contracts. Um, before we go into a discussion on this, could um, Ms. Dr. Massetti, could we have uh, Mike Pearson kind of explain um, the, build, the design build contracts, please? And then we can go into the discussion. Yeah, Mr. Pearson, can you please um, explain to the board why you brought this policy forward? I brought this policy forward uh, because the district needs to have a policy on record that makes it clear that the bridging architect, which is part of the design build model, cannot participate as part of the design build team for the next stage of the project. So right now we're in the process of having our bridging architect uh, work with us to develop the plan, to develop an outline that will be, then go to out to bid, uh, excuse me, out for application for a, a contractor and a uh, architect. Um, and that individual can it needs to make clear that that individual cannot participate as part of that design build team for the next stage of the, of the project. Um, it also, we also are looking at the fact that we need to make it clear that there are others cannot be involved to participate. For instance, our, you know, the Van Pelt construction firm, they couldn't decide to participate as a design build contractor um, either. Um, so, it, and if you'd like more, um, President uh, Martin, I can have Kelly Jurgensen also uh, chime in here too. I'll ask the board, does anybody need any further explanation? Okay, I think that that's suffice, Mr. Pearson. Thank you very thank much. You. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody have any comments with regard to J4A? Okay, so we move on. So we are on K action items. Action item K1, general services. K1A is resolution 20-42 to adopt a new trustee boundary area map and send proposals to com county committee on school district organization to approve by trustee area elections based on newly approved map. Uh, before we go into a resolution or roll call, just gonna, and maybe Dr. Massetti can help me if, if I explain this incorrectly. But the way I'm gonna do this is that I'm going to ask for a motion for map one first, and then I'll ask for a motion on map two. Um, if there is a different map that's introduced, um, I will then introduce that one. We need a first and we need a second, and then we need a roll call. You will decide whether it's an I, an A, or an obstruct, uh, ups, abstention. Um, based on the criteria we already know from Robert's rules or Brown Act rules. Um, so um, if you have any questions, right now would be the time. So I will, um, can I get a motion for map one? I have a question. Are we doing comment, are there gonna be comments for this section? Do we do that before we vote or after? Yeah, um, President Martin, we should see if there are any comments, um, any public comment. We've, we, we, need, we, didn't, we need to check for that before we Sorry go. Sorry about that. Um, are there any comments for this item, Mr. Ruiz? Yes, we do. We have Norma Ortiz. Norma, um, I'll, I will allow you to talk and then uh, start the mic. Yes. Some um, comentarios. These are comments. See? Sí? Yes. 
Yes. Okay. Entonces, eh, quiero que por favor eh, se tome en cuenta eh, lo que mencioné el 23 de abril. Voy a, eh, a, a resaltar es, eh, algunos puntos. I'm going to eh, highlight lo... some points that I uh, mentioned on the 23rd of April. Les agradezco también a la mesa. Están haciendo una excelente labor. I think the board, you're doing an excellent job. Okay, pero, pero se está tomando el tiempo en la traducción. But are you taking the time for the translation as well? No se preocupe, señora Ortiz. Vamos a doblar el tiempo, okay? Le doy tres, tres minutos adicional and a little bit more. Manny will be doubling it for translation plus a little bit more. Gracias. Es que es, um, ya, yeah, okay. Um, están haciendo una excelente labor. Siento que tienen bastante conocimiento. You're doing an excellent job. I feel like you have a lot of knowledge. La mesa actual, si bien es cierto, si estamos hablando de la voz latina, tenemos esa representación. Uh, the current uh, voice, uh, we're talking about uh, the, the Latino voice and we do have that representation. En la mesa actual. At the current board. Eh, y la actila queremos ver esa diversidad, esa representación e igualdad. We want to see that diversity, that representation, that equality at ELAC and DLAC. Y como dije anteriormente, no nada más enfocarnos en el aspecto demográfico. And I, as I said uh, beforehand, uh, we don't just want to uh, focus on the demographic aspect. Somos, somos mayoría, más de eh, alrededor de 52 a 53 por ciento. We're majority between 52 to 53 percent. Y tenemos el aspecto opuesto a eh, este grupo progresista. And we have this uh, progressive group. Uh, el, el aspecto, aspecto opuesto. opuesto. Oh, and we have the opposite aspect from this uh, group called the progressive group. He visto los mapas que se han propuesto, eh, I, que, vea, que vea el público. I have seen the maps that have been proposed for the public to see. Y pues me sigo quedando... Eh, y sigo con ese interrogante. And I continue to have this question. Ahorita voy a mencionar más a qué me refiero con esto. And I'm going to mention more about what I'm referring to with this, where I'm going with this. Y como repito, el equipo de la doctora Musetti está haciendo un muy buen trabajo. And as I repeat, uh, Ms., Ms., uh, Dr. Musetti's team is doing a very good job. Entonces, por lo tanto, estoy solicitando en audiencia pública So therefore, I'm asking for a public uh, hearing. En audiencia pública. Public, public hearing. Una extensión. An, exten an extension. O por lo menos una junta más. Or at least one more meeting. Para decidir referente a la redistribución. To decide about the redistribution. Repito, estamos como Latinos, ELAC, DLAC. As Latinos in ELAC and DLAC, I repeat, eh, debidamente representados. We're properly represented. Con nuestra actual mesa directiva. At our uh, current board. Eh, y tocante al comentario que hizo la presidenta eh, Isela. And regarding the comments made by President Isela. Eh, eh, con respecto a lo de uh, American Canyon. About American Canyon. Eh, yo siento que estamos debidamente representados. I feel we're duly represented. Eh, y, sabien, eh, y sabiendo el historial y la, y la experiencia de ellos, o sea, la mesa directiva. Knowing about the experience and the history of the board. Eh, en los temas tan, tan importantes. In the very important issues. Que se presentan ante ellos. Eh, that, con res uh -huh. that are being presented uh, in, front of, in front of you. Before en you. la educación. In education. No queremos ser divididos. We don't want to be divided. Queremos tener una voz representativa en toda Napa. We want to have a representative voice in, throughout Napa. Y creando uno o más mapas no va a solucionar. And creating one or more maps will, will not so, solve. Lo que pide este litigio. What this litigation is requesting. Traído por el movimiento Grupo Progresivo. Uh, brought forth by the Progressive Alliance Group. Por tal razón. Therefore. 
Estoy en oposición con la postura. I oppose the position. Del señor Scott Raffrey. Mr. Scott Raffrey. Y su movi movimiento progresista en este sentido. And his progressive movement in this sense. Eh, algo más. El grupo progresista. Something else. Uh, the progressive alliance. Necesita entender más. Needs to better understand. Nuestras necesidades. Our needs. ¿Acaso son latinos? Are they Latino? ¿Han ido a alguna de nuestras juntas? Have they gone to some of our meetings? ELAC DILAC. ELAC DILAC meetings? No, ¿verdad? Right, they have not gone, right? Porque sus nombres no me son familiares. Because their names are not familiar to me. Me, me pareció además. It seemed to me as well that. Mal intencionado. It, it was a bad intention. Y fuera de lugar. And out of place. El comentario y también no transparente. The comment and also it was not transparent. It was not clear. Lo, de, lo que se mencionó de uno de los miembros de este grupo con respecto a los correos electrónicos o la información porque eh, 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 la, la doctora Mercetti y su equipo son transparentes. Allí está la información. Uh, the comment made about the email, uh, it seemed like it was malintentioned because Dr. Mercetti and her team are transparent. They don't behave that way. Es un insulto y una gran falta de respeto. It's uh, disrespectful and it's an insult. A nuestra comunidad latina. To our Latino community. Lo que se está haciendo con este litigio. What is being done with this litigation. Y no están abogando efectivamente por And nuestros. And they're not at, disculpe. Y no están abogando efectivamente. Por nuestros eh, derechos. And they're not advocating effectively for our rights. Eh, efectivamente, por nuestros derechos eh, como un grupo de interés. As an interest group, as a special interest group. Eh, además, estoy eh, de acuerdo con lo que dijo uh, el, el señor Hurtado. I also agree with what Mr. Hurtado said. Que elaboró en cuanto a mis comentarios. That he made in uh, regards to my own comments. Eh, se lo agradezco porque eh, lo que dijo es acertado. I thank him because what he said is, hits the nail on the head. Tengo mucho que decir. I have a lot to say. Pero eh, me siento un poco presionada por el tiempo. <laughs> But I feel a little pressured by the amount of time. Quiero que se considere. I want uh, to be considered. I want this to be considered. Que no nomás somos eh, eh, el público, somos, eh, eh, tenemos una representación en nuestro distrito, somos grupo ELAC, DLAC. We're not just the public, we have a representation within our district, we're ELAC and DLAC. Y por lo tanto, me merecemos que se consideren nuestras peticiones debidamente. And therefore, we deserve to have our petitions considered, duly considered. Gracias. A ustedes. Thank you, you, to you. Thank you, Mr. Ortiz. Okay. Do we have additional comments on this item, Mr. Ruiz? We do. Uh, Scott Rafferty would like to speak. Scott, I will um, unmute your mic and start the timer. Go ahead, Scott. Thank you. Uh, I am, am somewhat saddened by to hear these uh, uh, these comments because I think they misconstrue uh, the extraordinary support the district has gotten from my client. We're not in litigation. Uh, four and a half months ago, uh, we had a conversation. Uh, you made a resolution to move forward. It's an exceptionally opportune time to do so. Uh, you uh, apparently may have some uh, uh, open seats. Uh, it's a presidential election. 
districts before redistricting. We have an opportunity to bring on board members to have a seat at the table when you redistrict. Uh, there is no district, school district in California that has had stronger support from the petitioners than we've given. And it hasn't been simply about race. It's been about demographics, about disadvantage, about limited language, uh, limited English proficiency. We would have loved to have come to your DLAC meeting uh, where you spent two hours with the demographer, but we weren't invited. We weren't notified. The public wasn't notified. And as deeply as we care and as, as committed as I've been in this district and throughout the state, and my client has been to the Latino community, particularly the island that Ms. Ortiz speaks about, where my client seems to be the most vocal uh, person, entity in the city of Napa, probably the most committed. But the Latino community is not the only protected group under California state and federal law. There's also the Filipino community, a community that has been unrepresented on this, on this, on this body. And we all have a duty to reach out. And they have not been part of this DLAC meeting with the demographer. We have faithfully represented them and we have faithfully advocated for communities of interest. You have before you map one, which allows all the incumbents to run at the conclusion of their term, map two, which does not. Uh, and uh, we think there, there's a choice uh, and uh, we hope that you move forward. Uh, now, if you want an extra meeting, I mean, you can help yourself to that, of course, but it needs to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Ms. Rafferty. Additional comments, Mr. Reese? That concludes our comments for this item, President Martin. Okay. So, I want it. okay, thank you. Do we have an opportunity to speak before we get to the voting at this point? Because I would like to certainly address some points. Yes. So give me one second. So before we move into discussion, I wanted to thank um, uh, all members of the public for your comments and input, uh, both during the meeting tonight and electronically uh, prior to the meeting. Um, as the board deliberates, we will consider all the input that we received to date from all of our stakeholders. So as we move forward, I go ahead, Mr. Gracia, you can start. Thank you. So. I just, I, I'm continually, I guess, frustrated by uh, the presentations of the attorney that, you know, when he comes to the mic, he says, we're not in litigation. Well, the only reason we're not in litigation is because he can't sue yet because we're still in the 90 day protected period. So yes, we're not in litigation, but that's only because he can't yet sue us because we are still protected by the statute. So, I mean, it seems like a very disingenuous to me representation to make at the podium. And then the idea that he's not notified of DLAC or ELAC meetings, I find baffling as well as these are public meetings, well posted, notified to the general public. They can attend if they want. Um, you know, I, I just can't wrap my mind around his thought process on this. Um, representations that he has just made. I, they seem extremely disingenuous to me. So uh, I just had to get that piece off my chest. And, and then with regard to the maps, I believe that we should consider um, voting for map uh, D. I really think that map D does the best job of, of representing the districts, um, both in the North and South. I would have liked to have seen the polish um, uh, applied to map D as, as its own map uh, and not only as a half map as we have with finalist one and two. 
I feel like um, we, we miss out on the benefits uh, of, of MAPD, which I thought was the, the best map that was presented last time. And so my suggestion is that we vote to approve map D um, or that we consider allowing uh, the demographer to adjust map D in a way um, that they did to finalist, you know, map one in the South County area. Cause I felt like that was um, elegantly done for, uh, for the South County, especially that I think it was G1 that they did down there um, and it was certainly can better than. Can I interrupt you? I'm sorry, I feel like I do this to you every time, but it is 1030 and we need to extend. So can I get a, a next? Oh, motion? moved. Second. So a first by Miss, <laughs> Miss Water and a second by Mr. Gracia. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nays, abstentions, student rep, She's not on anymore. Might have had to put her brother. Okay. Motion carries. Okay, David. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, I believe that D is the one we should be looking at. Um, you know, and or considering allowing them to polish up a complete D map because instead they've chopped it in half and put one on finalist one and one on finalist two, neither of which represents. Uh, what I saw is the elegance of respecting all of the areas um, the best by including the entirety of map D. I think that was really the best of the, the maps that we had previously. And that's the one that I would like to see us vote on tonight uh, or allow them to polish better to give us a, a, a better choice. Um, because I, I really did like the way that they um, change the American Canyon part. But if, if my fellow trustees are not interested in that, then I would um, encourage you to consider finalist map two. Additional comments, trustees? Could you could you go over the whole how we're going to arrange the voting behind door number one, door number two, and door number three? Okay, since um, since Mr. Gracia has put forward um, uh, map D, um, what it how this goes is I will start with map one. Can I get a motion for map one? I will get a first. If we get a second. If it does not carry through, then it dies. Then we move on to, can I get a mo motion for map two? We need a first, we need a second, depending on the vote, whether or not it, it dies or it carries. And then we move into um, map D. The same, the same process. Um. Uh, President Martin um, and uh, are my parliamentary experts on the line, um, you know, with lots of years of experience. Uh, would it make sense to move D first and see if a motion carries? Okay, we could do that. That, that would be the way I would approach it, uh, if only because you can think of it as an amended motion. Uh, you peel off a vote on the amended motion and then go back to the main motion. Sounds good to me. I like that solution best. Any other further comments with regard to, or any other amendments? I, I would like to address something that, um, the question that Ms. Ortiz uh, posed to us, I, I, um, and that was to uh, delay, uh, postpone the, the vote, uh, call for an additional meeting. Uh, Dr. Massetti, I think we're on a on a tight timeline around this issue. If I, am I correct? You are. Um, we are. Um, and um, despite some of the the relief that was given uh, via the governor's executive orders with all of these sorts of things, 
you know, we're so far along in the process um, that, you know, it would, it would not be, I think, in the district's best interest to resurrect or start over given the degree of work that's been invested time and resource wise. And I think uh, uh, Mr. Shunk has mentioned before that as a result of the census that we might be revisiting a lot of, a lot of boundaries in the near future. So, you know, and it's important to, to note that we as a board uh, approved moving to district elections before uh, the pressure. And we had, again, we had uh, decided that we would uh, move to district elections in 2022 in order to uh, put in place exactly what Ms. Ortiz is asking us for now. And that was a, 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 a thoughtful, well-designed, uh, community engagement program that would allow for uh, 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 town hall meetings, input, and the development of a of a plan um, over over time, as opposed to a matter of a year or so, as opposed to a matter of months. And and thank you, Mr. Rafferty, for for congratulating our 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 district uh, uh, leadership for all the work and the excellent work that they've done before, can you imagine just how much better it would have been if we had been able to work on our own timeline? Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Additional comments or amendments? Okay. Um, so for the resolution, um, can I get a motion for map D? It's moved. First by Mr. David Gracia. I'll, I I'll give it a second so they can get a clean vote up or down. A second by Mr. Shunk. All those in favors? Isn't this a resolution that we have to roll call? Yes, you do. Roll call, Ms. Vera Morales. Trustee Martin? Nay. Trustee Gonzalez Mares? Trustee Gonzalez Mares? I was muted. Nay. Trustee Jankowitz? Nay. Trustee Water? Nay. Trustee Hurtado? No. Trustee Shank? No. Trustee Gracia? Yes. Student Trustee Madrigal? Student, student Trustee Madrigal? Excuse me? I think she. Alondra, are you still on? Yeah. Do you want to vote on this one? Yeah, I said no. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Motion dies. Moving on to um, map number one. Can I get a motion for map number one? So moved. A first by Ms. Elba Gonzalez Mares. Do I have a second? I'll give it a second for the same reason as last time that it gets an up down vote. Sounds good. A second by Mr. Joe Shunk. Roll call. Trustee Martin. Nay. Trustee Gonzalez Mares. Aye. Trustee Jankowitz. Nay. Trustee Water. Nay. Trustee Hurtado. No. Trustee Shunk. Nay. Trustee Gracia. Nay. Student Trustee Madrigal? Thing. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I thought my mic wasn't working. Okay, okay motion dies. Can I get a motion for map two? I'll move for map two. 
Second. Finalist two. A first by Mr. Joe Shunk. A second by Mr. David Gracia. Roll call. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Gonzalez Marins. I'll join. Aye. <laughs> Trustee Jenkins. Aye. Trustee Water. Aye. Trustee Hurtado. Aye. Trustee Shunk. Aye. Trustee Gracia. Aye. Student Trustee Madrigal. Thank you. Motion carries. I'm shaking everybody, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cer certainly one of the more complicated votes we've had to take. Good job. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, due to time, let's move on. Um, K1B, um, adoption. A revi revised board policy 5112.5 open closed campus. So moved. A second. First by Mr. David Gracia, a second by Ms. Robin Jankowitz. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And I'm sorry, I did not ask for public comment on this item. Is there anything public comment? No public comments on this item, President Martin. Um, K1C, adoption of revised administrative regulation 5145.3, students, non-discrimination, harassment. Um, and this has to do with our, um, our flag that we discussed. Any public comment? Any public comment? Thank you, Robin. There are no public comments on this item, President Martin. I will let Ms. Elba Gonzalez go ahead and lead us in a. Um, I'll make a motion and then I have a comment afterwards. If I may. I'll second. A first by Elba Gonzalez Mares and a second by, I'm sorry. Cindy. Cindy Waters. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, well, if we were in a boardroom, I would be, I'll go ahead, sorry. <laughs> Alondra? Yes or, yes or nay? Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, motion carries. Go ahead, Elba. Yeah, well, if I was, we were in the boardroom, I'd start spreading our um, rainbow hearts. Um, just to begin the rainbow spirit of, of pride. Um, my comment was um, based on also comments made at our last meeting of the request that the flag be um, lifted on um, Harvey Milk's Day, um, and that falls on May 22nd. Um, and I know that along with that is a little bit more planning and a, a little longer to do some curriculum preparedness to go along with the importance of the day. Um, but that was a request um, made by the, by the group who spoke um, at our last meeting, who stayed with us at the very late, late hours. Um, and um, in circling back with them, that request has been made in my understanding that also, Dr. Massetti received an email about this, so I just wanted to get some um, direction on that. So my my uh, my suggestion would be is um, such a symbolic day for our LGBT community to raise the flag on May 22nd, and then have it flown throughout Pride Month, which is the month of June, and then this way it um, ideally, right, if our schools were open um, physically. Um, students would see um, the flag, but I think it's even more so important with everything that is going on to let our uh, community know that we are um, we are all one here, and um, so that that's um, where I'm at right now. So, wanting to see what we can do about that. Yeah. So, so thank you for the request, um, Trustee. Um, Gonzalez Manes, I will um, take your recommendation. I did receive uh, some of those requests uh, from the advocacy uh, group that uh, sort of gave us the charge over a year ago um, around this uh, board policy. 
And so um, I'll go back and huddle with my team, with our assistant superintendent, Pat Andrew Jennings, around the curriculum component. That might be a little difficult given our current um, context and circumstances, but we can definitely make that a long-term goal. Um, and then um, I'll work with um, the operationals team, operational team and whatnot around um, the exact dates that the, the flag will um, be flown. Um, and, um, you know, so let me just go back with, to, to work with the team and, and assess May 22nd through June 30th and make sure we thought through all the feasibility of that. But I, I hear the request, I received it from constituents as well, and I'm happy to try and honor that. Thank you, Dr. Mr. Okay, moving on to K1D. This is the memo that I read at the very beginning. This was the change. It was updates to administrative regulations 1312.3 and 5145.7 or dot seven to include corrected contact information for both of the district's two Title IX coordinators. So moved. Okay, first by Mr. Shunk. I'll second, but I got some questions. I just wanted to ask if um, we need to list the actual person's name or is the fact that we've got the position and contact information sufficient? I believe it's the entire name. Correct me if I'm wrong, doctor. Yeah, we, it's, it's sufficient. We've posted it on all of our public, um, our website, um, and we've sent the information. So uh, our um, implementation requirement was to get it sent out to families, which we actually did that today. And we've updated uh, the, the uniform complaint Title IX webpage on our district website with um, name, title, email, and phone number. Thank you. Um, is there any public comment on this item? There are no public comments on this item, Dr. Martin, Pr President Martin. Thank you. Not quite the doctor yet. <laughs> almost, almost, Manny. <laughs> um, so I have a first by Mr. Shunk, a second by Mr. Gracia. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays? Abstentions? Student rep? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. K1E, contract with, can you please correct me? I don't know how to pronounce this. <laughs> the Media and Design LLC group. Aperture. 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 Okay. Aperture. <laughs> I'll move to approve. Second. Second. Do I have any public comment on this item? There are no public comments on this item, President Martin. So I have a first by Mr. Gracia, a second by Ms. Cindy Waters. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nays? Abstentions? Student representative? Aye. Okay, thank you, Alondra. Motion carries. Um, K2 Business and Operations. K2A Stonebridge Charter School Renewal Petition. I will move to renew. I second. I want to say that I still have very strong reservations about the financial ability of them to stay in business. I don't believe with the information that we've received today and the explanation that I got from um, the principal there this evening that they are going to be able to remain fiscally solvent. Thank you. Do I have any public comment on this item? There are no public comments on this item, President Martin. Thank you. So I have a first by Mr. Joe Shunk. And I have a second by Ms. Robin Jankowitz. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nays? Nay. One nay, but Mr. David Gracia. Abstentions? Student representative? Aye. Okay. Thank you, Alondra. Motion carries. K2B, 
charter school facilities use agreements between Stonebridge School and Napa Valley Unified School District. I guess I couldn't say anything. I wanted to say something. Uh, I'll move to approve this. So this, um, do I have any public comment on this? There are no public comments on this item, President Martin. Okay, I'll entertain a uh, second. Second. Second by Mr. Joe Shunk. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays? Abstentions? Student rep? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you, Alondra. Resolution 2041, acceptance of Napa Valley Language Academy, NVLA, voluntary relinquishment of its charter and reversion back to a district traditional school and approval of transition memorandum of understanding. So moved. So I have a first by Mr. Gracia. A second. A second by Mr. Shunk. Roll call please, Vera. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Gonzalez Mares. Aye. Trustee Jankowitz. Aye. Trustee Water. Aye. Trustee Hurtado. Aye. Trustee Shunk. Aye. Trustee Gracia. Aye. Student Trustee Madrigal. Aye. Thank you. President Martin, I just want to take a brief moment. Um, I know Napa Valley Language Academy has been part of the NBUSD educational landscape for a really long time. So I just want to take a moment to just welcome them um, in this new capacity as a traditional dual immersion um, K-6 elementary school. Um, and we're grateful for all of the collaboration. I think I've mentioned it um, in, in previous uh, board meetings. Um, we want to thank all of, uh, we want to thank the Charter Council and Principal Alejandra Uribe for all of their collaboration as we facilitated this transition smoothly. Thank you very much. K2D Resolution 2039 Interfund Borrowing. Ed code for, or excuse me, those are my notes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, before we go into, I know. <laughs> Before we go into a, a roll call vote here, um, Dr. Massetti, could you have someone um, explain to us what interfund borrowing is? Yeah, I'm going to ask Assistant Superintendent uh, Rob Minguala to address this agenda item. This resolution allows us, in, in case of a cash emergency, to borrow funds uh, within other funds to supplement the general fund during a cash shortage such as we may experience during COVID-19. All right, I'll move to approve this item. Second. Okay, so I have a, excuse me, a first by Mr. David Gracia and a second by Ms. Cindy Water. Do I have any public comment on this item? There are no public comments on this item, President Martin. Um, roll call, Ms. Uh, Vera Morales. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Gonzalez Mares. Aye. Trustee Jankowitz. Aye. Trustee Water. Aye. Trustee Hurtado. Aye. Trustee Shank. Aye. Trustee Gracia. Aye. Student Trustee Madrigal. Aye. Thank you. Okay, motion carries. Uh, K3 Human Resources, K3A Resolution 2040, Decision Not to Reemploy Certificated Employees. So moved. I have a first by Mr. David Gracia. Second. A second by Mr. Joe Shunk. Do I have any public comments on this item? President Martin, we do have a, a public commenter, uh, Gail Young. Gail, I will allow you to speak and start the timer. Hello, trustees. Um, I actually could not let this vote go by without saying something. Um, I'm so disappointed that we are having to lay off some of the best and brightest teachers that we have. Um, the COVID-19, the problems with the budget have made it even more um, disturbing and, and worrisome. Um, I've seen this recession and been, been through a recession before. And it's, it's a horrible thing that we do to our, to our staff, to our community, to our children. Um, I really, um, 
I know that you're not looking to lay off people, but I really want you to think as you make this vote about those 70 people that are on this list. I know that the district is trying very, very hard to hire as many back as possible because our students come first, but our employees are suffering from it. And I just, I couldn't go, couldn't let this go by without um, making some comment and making you well aware that, that we're very concerned. Thank you, Gail. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Gail. Are there any other comments on this item? Public comment. There are no further comments on this item, President Martin. Okay. I have a first by Mr. David Gracian, a second by Mr. Joe Shunk. Roll call, Ms. Vera Morales. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Gonzalez Mares. Aye. Trustee Jankowitz? Aye. Trustee Water? Aye. Trustee Hurtado? Aye. Trustee Shunk? Aye. Trustee Gracia? Aye. Student Trustee Madrigal? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Uh, K4, Instructional Services. K4A, single plan for student achievement of Napa Valley Independent Study. So moved. For first by Mr. Gracia. Second. Second by Mr. Joe Shunk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm sorry, do we have public comment on this item? I keep forgetting, sorry, sorry, sorry. There are no public comments for this item, President Warren. Thank you. Um, K-5 school planning and construction. K-5A architecture for vintage high varsity baseball field additional service request. Do I have any public comment on this item? There are no public comments on this item, President Martin. There you so, go. Moved. so I have a first by Ms. Robin Jankowitz and a second by Mr. David Gracia. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstentions? Um, nays. Student representative? Aye. Thank you, Alondra. Motion carries. K5B SPC 18.10-20 Amendment of Lease Lease Back Agreement to include pricing for Phase 1 MVLA Campus Modernization Project. So moved. Second. A first by Mr. Grassi and a second by Mr. Joe Shunk. Do I have any public comment? <coughs> Excuse me. There are no public comments for this item, President Martin. Okay. First by Mr. Gracia, second by Mr. Shunk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nays? Abstentions? Student representative? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Good I say um, board representative reports. Um, L1, Curriculum and Student Support Committee. Is there anyone yes. to report out? Yes, we had uh, a meeting and we did learn quite a bit. Um, the first topic that we learned a bit about was distance learning. We got an update on how it's being implemented at the current time and how this new instruction model is just as time intensive as the old model as teachers are learning new technologies and delivery mechanisms. Um, and there's quite a bit of prep work that goes into the actual digital lesson delivery. Um, we discussed some of the technology being used and how elementary teachers in particular are really finding value in the Seesaw program, which is now available for use district-wide. We got a report on the math task force where we heard some preliminary findings uh, indicating that we have a big curriculum problem at the secondary level and a training and support problem sort of across the district. Uh, the results of the task force are not yet complete uh, as they were delayed by the COVID-19 issues. Um, the task force hopes to have further results in June uh, along with the results of the math study that the board approved. I think it was back in February. Um, we also heard from the discipline task force 
Uh, the district is making good progress at separating out restorative practices from discipline practices and is working on some deliverables around a discipline matrix, which we should hope to see sometime in the 2020-21 school year. I was pleased to see that progress is being made in realizing PBIS is not a discipline, but rather intervention system, and that we need a consistent discipline system across the district for the safety and well-being of our students. This new discipline system will work in parallel with the intervention system already in place and will not replace our intervention system. Once this work is completed, we look forward to communicating it out to our teachers, students, and parents. And we also discussed how there is a human element to these decisions and how that agency is not going to be removed from the principals and administrators at our school sites. We also discussed the science curriculum. We've been piloting several new science curriculum possibilities in the district, but this important work was interrupted by the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, the committee doing the testing is dedicated to taking its time to find a strong curriculum as they realize that an investment in a new curriculum is a big deal and could have a lasting impact for many years to come. It is likely that more use of test curriculum will be required and we will likely not hear back from them on the current test results until sometime in winter of 2020. Uh, the committee is really taking their responsibility seriously and has preserved the option that they may not recommend any of the curriculum currently being tested and may require new tests with new curriculum in the future. And I think that was the, the totality of our, our learning at that committee meeting. Facilities and Technology Committee. Thank you, David, for the report. I was also on this committee. Um, in technology, we learned about how the Chromebook deployment was going, along with the deployment of laptops for some of our classified employees. We heard about the IT help desk that we have that is providing IT support, not just for our faculty um, and employees, but also for our families so that they can continue to participate in the virtual learning. Uh, we were also informed about the conversion to our new accounting software that is proceeding as planned. Uh, on the facility side of things, we learned a bit about Van Pelt Construction, their organizational structure surrounding the support that they provide to our district, along with the roles and responsibilities of those positions. Uh, we came to discover that we have some very experienced people helping us oversee our complex construction projects and have generally benefited greatly from their expertise and local connections. We also learned about what value engineering is and how it is a process used to try and cut costs both at the beginning of and then throughout the life of a project without cutting the critical program aspects of a particular build, which was a rather interesting presentation. And that uh, concludes the technology and uh, facilities report. And the next facilities and technology meeting, I think is May 26th. Perfect. Okay, um, finance committee did not meet, is that correct? Correct. Uh, policy committee didn't meet as well? And we'll meet on June 2nd. Okay, made note of that. Special Education Community Advisory Council? We have not met. Okay, City of American Canyon, we have a tentative date, or excuse me, we have a solid date, sorry, May 21st at 12 at uh, 12 30 um myself and joe shunk um city of napa liaison representative we have a meeting coming up but we haven't met okay and uh town of yonville liaison representative we haven't met either we have a meeting coming up as well okay mm -hmm. thank you so moving on um m additional suggestions and comments from board members and superintendent Any comments? I do want to thank everybody for um, the hard decisions that we had to make tonight. Um, uh, reducing staff, extending our boundaries. Um, it, it made everyone, we, we were all in the hot seat tonight for sure. Um, Joe, thank you so much um, for enlightening me on um, charter. Um, I actually did my homework this time. 
I really, really did my homework on the, on this one. Um, but it seems it doesn't matter how much of the homework I do, you always outbeat and outdo me. So it doesn't even matter. <laughs> So I want to thank you so much for just the extensive um, knowledge that you bring. Um, I just felt like I had done my due diligence, but no, Joe has to go back more dates in the past. <laughs> so I do want to thank you for that, which is great. It's great. Um, I thought I had done, like I said, I thought I had done my due diligence. Um, but for everyone on the board, I know it's been a tough, um, tough decisions to make, um, especially doing work that we're going to have to do here uh, shortly. Whether that's myself or other board members, that's fine. But know that we there's another um, there's more homework to come to be continued. Um, any anybody else have any comments? Closing comments? Oh, just one thing. Uh, while I was rolling through the tapes, and I've told this to a couple of you, of you, I just was spinning around trying to orient myself and went plunk on 2015, and there is Mr. Joe Shunk intoning. I am not a leprechaun and I do not have a bag of money. <laughs> it's, and I burst out laughing, except, you know, it's actually sad because here we are again. And uh, I wish you were a leprechaun with a bag of money, Joe. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> Thank you for the laugh too. <laughs> Additional comments? Uh, well, when you get to future agenda items, let me know. Okay, there is no sure. additional comment. I'll, I'll make a final additional comment. Um, I, we do recognize, you know, as a board that it's never pleasant to have to make cuts of personnel. Um, unfortunately, the financial picture that we are living in is getting worse and not better. Uh, the COVID-19 situation has um, projected that our budgets will be cut by at least 10% um, in the coming year and that <clears throat> we're in a state of possibly depression, uh, certainly recession. And so more tough decisions are likely coming. No one likes to make those decisions, but here we are and we will be called upon to do them again. Okay, if there are no additional comments, we'll move to future agenda items. So one of the just past uh, agenda items, the vintage high, high varsity baseball field triggered a future agenda item for me which is a progress report on the 2019 Title IX Athletic Studies Action Plan. Because my recollection is there were some softball items we needed to clean up along with somebody bringing forward a whole bunch of policies that the board needed to sign off for. So it's been a year since we got our Title IX Athletic Study and it's probably, we're probably due for a check-in. Okay, that's good. Dr. Massetti, do we, would you make note to bring that forward? I have noted it. I'll put it on our uh, roster where we, where we log future agenda items and then uh, look at the board calendar and propose a date. Thank you. And I think we're already slated for a further math update in June, but I just wanted to put a plug out there for that as well. Given the circumstances, does that make a difference in our, like a math study? Yeah, we may have to make adjustments. So I'll, okay. I'll communicate those adjustments to the board. Thank you. Um, additional future agenda items? Okay, um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. The first second. by Mr. Jose Hurtado, a second by Mr. Joe Shunk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstentions? I don't think anybody wants to abstain. <laughs> Student representative? Aye. Thank you, Alondra, for joining us this evening. Everyone have a good night. Thank you again. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.